Okay, it's a busy morning. Welcome to our uh, City Commission work session of May 17th. We'll call the meeting to order. Thank you all for being here. Nikki, will you please lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance? Absolutely. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Nikki. All right, we're going to go. We have some really awesome presentations today, so we're going to hop right to it. Our first one is the um, Older Americans Month proclamation, and I will turn that over to Commissioner Franey. Sure, give me the first thing today. I wasn't quite ready. But no. <laughs> ready or not. Um, and I think uh, Ginny Moore is here. Yes, Ginny. Come on down. How are you? Uh, Older Americans Month 2022, whereas the city of Dunedin includes a growing number of older Americans who contribute their strength, wisdom, and experience to our community. And whereas communities benefit when people of all ages, abilities, and backgrounds are welcomed, included, and supported. And whereas Dunedin and the Area Agency on Aging of Pasco Pinellas recognizes our need to create a community that provides the services and supports older Americans, its need to thrive and live independently for as long as possible. And whereas Dunedin and the Area Agency on Aging of Pasco Pinellas can work to build an even better community for our older residents by planning programs that encourage independence, ensuring activities that are responsive to individual needs and preferences, increasing access to services that support aging in place. Now, therefore, I'm Maureen Mofraney, by virtue of the authority vested in me by the mayor of the city of Dunedin, Florida, on behalf of the entire commission, do hereby proclaim May 2022 as Older Americans Month and urge every resident to recognize the contributions of our older citizens, help to create an inclusive society, and join efforts to support older Americans' choices about how they age in their communities. I'd like to say a few words. Can I say just a couple of words? Uh, yes, I'm. I'm uh, it's a pleasure to be here representing the uh, the Commission on Aging. And uh, Sandy was not available. She's on. She's traveling. Um, and I just wanted to say that the focus for um, Age My Way is the focus for uh, uh, this year's uh, Older Americans Month. And the focus for aging in place, living independently, exploring opportunities for all of us to remain and be involved in their communities is certainly an ideal that you had mentioned in the proclamation as well as I think something that we follow probably 12 months of the year and not just one. So we have some wonderful people that we've um, recently recognized and I know you're going to too. Thank you very much. Thank you. You guys do an awesome job too. <laughs> okay, now we're gonna um, have our Senior Hall of Fame inductees proclamation and I will turn that over to our Vice Mayor. Whereas the city of Dunedin has always been and continues to be a community comprised of people who donate their time and abilities to serving. And whereas Dunedin has been recognized its senior community with the Senior Hall of Fame since 1999. And this year's inductees, Daniel Massaro and Patty Boylan, for they have certainly made significant contributions to the city of Dunedin and its residents. And whereas our inductees continue to lead by example and give, them, give of themselves with the hope that what they do will assist in making a difference in the lives of those they encounter. And whereas we who have come to know Daniel and Patty realize that they have made a great difference and Dunedin is indeed fortunate to be able to count them among its residents. Now, therefore, I, Deborah Kynes, by virtue of the authority vested in me by the mayor of the city of Dunedin, Florida, and on behalf of the entire city commission, do hereby honor our 2022 Senior Hall of Fame inductees in recognition of their accomplishments and contributions that have enriched the lives of so many. And hopefully we'll
we'll hear a few words. We Somehow, Patty, we didn't get to hear from you last time. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm really a person of very few words. Um, I've lived in Dunedin for over 40 years. I've lived in uh, Pinellas County for over 50 years, and I've seen it grow and blossom, and Dunedin is just the most ideal place in the world to live, as we all know. And uh, of course, my children were born here, my grandchildren are born here, and I'm, I'm just so honored um, to receive this award. And of course, I couldn't, I couldn't be here, or I couldn't have done all this without the help of hundreds of people over the years that have helped me with my projects and I've helped them with theirs. And I thank the City Commission for everything that you've done. Thank you. Thank, thank you very you. much, Patty. And I'm going to say that Patty has been, um, she's been in a, a very strong environmental advocate. That's what I really remember from, um, they did a, a lovely um, sort of retrospective of your life. So. Thank you. And Dan? Well, um, at our uh, uh, meeting last week where the awards were given to us, um, I did have a little presentation that I made. And the very last sentence in this presentation, after I identified a number of projects uh, and um, uh, things that I've been involved with, one of the last sentences I said here is that um, I have managed to put my fingerprints on many important projects throughout our wonderful city. And I have social media picked it up, and they said I've put my footprints <laughs> <laughs> of wonderful projects. Well, those two, right? Those two. And thinking about this after a while, I must admit, uh, it could be that I did have my footprints in, in some of this. So I wanted to clarify that. <laughs> One other thing I think is important of, of all the things that uh, I have been uh, honored to be involved in is uh, the city of Dunedin's uh, many boards and committees. And um, since 1975, when I was on the very first committee, which was the Community Block Grant Program. Not too many people remember that one. That goes way back. But I always look at that as the very one of the very first committees uh, that started a lot of our neighborhood improvements, which led to our downtown development. So over the uh, past years, from 1975 to date, Okay, which is 47 years. I have been totally involved on some active committee or board for 37 years of that 47 year period of time. And I've enjoyed every moment of it. Our downtown, I think, is absolutely gorgeous and great. And the envy of many, many other cities uh, within the state of Florida. So uh, thank you for allowing me to uh, be on these boards and committees. I've enjoyed it. And of course, thank you for this, this honor that you've given me. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you so you. much, Dan. So I'm, I'm sure people would like to make some yeah, comments. Yeah, Go ahead, Commissioner. Yeah, no, I would. Um, you know, I went to the Hog Hustle, uh, what, a week or two ago? Jennifer, I didn't run with Jennifer. I walked. <laughs> you walked <But>, fast. <laughs> but the pancake breakfast was inside Hale Center. So as you came inside Hale Center, you saw all the Hall of Fame people, all the plaques all along the wall and their pictures. And it, it's and I took time to just look down them. And it's truly a Hall of Fame. I mean, it's amazing people who've made amazing contributions. So when I look at you, Patty, and I look at you, Dan, like you joined just, just amazing people people that we've just continue to walk on the, the shoulders of. Um, and, and so it's, this is no small thing. This is huge. This is huge. This makes you the, you know, the cream of the crop, the peak of the peak. I mean, the people that really have given so much to make, unselfishly, to make our community better. And yes, Patty, I think of you like the environmental wizard. I, I'm almost embarrassed that I didn't had no idea you had done all that. And it's amazing. And of course, Dan, I turned to you so many times to advise on buildings and structures. I went by City Hall the other day and I was telling the story about 
saying something to you before we made the decision on the design of City Hall. And you had said, you know, early in our design, they actually had the glass go all the way to the wave, the roof. And it was so much better. And they pulled back that version, and that's the version that ended up getting put there. And it makes a huge difference, the glass going all the way without a break before the roof. So, um, and be glad they didn't say you put your foot in your mouth, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, but really, thank you, because you are what makes Dunedin special. You are. Thank you. Commissioner, anything? Yes, uh, thank you. Patty and Dan, um, I've been here for quite a long time, and I don't ever remember not knowing your involvement here, uh, doing something, some kind of an involvement. Uh, I, too, when I go to the health center, I love to walk that, those pictures, and they're just fantastic. And I can't, I can't imagine two better people for the selection this year than you two. So uh, you heard me applauding, I think, uh, on the day of, well, you already knew, but about the announcement. So you guys are really are fantastic. And I think you're someone that we can all look up to, everyone, all of us can look up to as the kind of citizen and resident that Dunedin is really, really very proud and very lucky to have. So thank you very much for all, all the effort that you have put in and continue to put into the city of Dunedin. Thanks. Awesome. Commissioner Gale. Oh, thank you, Mayor. Um, you know, there's a, there's a constant discussion in Dunedin, and, and it all kind of focuses on development, and it's about keeping Dunedin unique, keeping it small. And uh, I, I think the element that's missing from that is the input of the residents that live here. And, and the, there, you hear all the time how happy we are. You know, we're always welcoming and, and, and willing to have conversation with people. But it's also their activism in, 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 a, in, a, in a true positive sense, that they really roll up their sleeves and just get involved. Uh, you know, they, they, they see a need and they've heard the call and they just, they just do it. And it's not only the, the, the Hall of Famers, but before the Hall of Fame, if you just read some of the, the history of Dunedin Times and just the list of people and what they've done and the discussions they've had and what we've accomplished has been so amazing. And just to think about the number of people that you pass as you walk down sidewalks or streets, and especially in such a, a divisive environment, that we really don't know the people that we're passing. We really don't know. And if we really took the time to talk to people and understand who they are and what they've done, you would certainly meet people like Patty and Dan and the numerous others, uh, residents in, in the city that uh, really love to call Dunedin their home. So I just, I, I thank every Hall of Famer that's there. I thank everybody that sits on any one of our advisory committees, uh, any one of our coaches for Little League, basketball, soccer, anybody who that gets involved in this community, uh, please know that you help to make this community what it is. Thank you, Commissioner. Anything else that you wanted to say, Vice Mayor? Well, um, I, I was very interested in your slogan, it's Age My Way. Is that, what was your slogan? Age My Way. And I, I think that is so interesting in the broad, uh, in, in the broad philosophic thought of how we age. And believe me, I'm thinking about it too. <laughs> you know, I'm thinking about how you age, how you remain vital and interested and interesting. And, uh, you know, both of you have just, you exemplify that. There are studies out now that the way people approach aging, um, their involvement, their interests, and how uh, it prolongs life, and that it really does not only prolong life, but prolongs the quality of your life. So uh, I'm, I'm very... Um, it's amazing, you know, with your environmental, you're starting off as a teacher, your broad retrospective, of everything you've been involved in, Patty. And Dan, I've known for so many years. He, you know, I think DTAC, starting the downtown efforts so many years ago was something you've got to always keep close to your heart. You've, he's been involved with, you know, restoring the chamber building, restoring the historic museum and you know involved as president of this and president of that and the chamber and um, 
you know, I know there's so many things I'm missing, but they really do exemplify aging my way, aging my way with my community and continuing to be major contributors. And um, I truly respect that, and I thank you. Thank you, commissioners. Um, unfortunately, I wasn't able to make it to your um, event last week for, for personal reasons, and I do sincerely apologize for that. Um, it's something I generally never miss. Um, but in thinking about it a lot, you know, we have, we're in a new environment today than we were just five years ago and just 10 years ago and just 15 years ago. Um, a lot of people tackle their issues through social media, um, the news, and any other platform, um, but it's not face-to-face. And what I value about both of you is the time that you've taken to not only try to address things that you see going on in our community that you think can be better, but you sit down and discuss it like fellow neighbors. And you spend sincere time on these committees and boards and projects with with maybe the staff people here in the city of Dunedin or anyone else that's involved with improvements in our community. Um, and a lot of people just don't do that anymore. They don't have time for it in their life. They don't think it's important. Um, and I think you set a prime example for all the new people that are moving in Dunedin as to how to really get ingrained, how to meet people, how to make a difference in your community, and how to solve community problems um, in a way that um, isn't divisive, um, but thoughtful. And I think that's really important. And I, too, called Dan, and I'm, you know, every once in a while um, to get his opinion on something. And I, we certainly all watch those LPA meetings. You know, we're glued to those. And, and the one thing I can say about Dan is, is, is a word that always comes to my mind is thoughtful. You think about what you're doing and the cause and effect and every word that comes out of your mouth. It's very thoughtful. Um, and I also think we need to, you know, thank spouses and family. Yeah. Because, you know, they support. they support. And they don't just support what their spouse is doing. They're most of the time involved in some way or another. Um, I mean, I can certainly say that about my husband and especially my child, who's not a child anymore, but, you know, he's my adult child, my man child over there. Um, and so, you know, those are important people to say thank you to as well. Um, and I really hope that people take a moment to think about, as times change, that it's okay to sit in a room face to face with your neighbors and talk about the issues and try to find solutions. And thank you for setting that example. Okay, we have one more um, proclamation, and that's the Dunedin Paint Purple Day for Alzheimer's. And I will turn that over to Commissioner Gao. Thank you, Mayor. And we continue our celebration of people that just get involved and roll up their sleeves. Uh, Steve, Austin, come on up. This is such a wonderful event that hasn't been around long, but it has certainly caught fire, and, and everybody just seems to embrace it, which is which is so Dunedin. <laughs> uh, paint Dunedin Purple Day for Alzheimer's. Whereas as many as 6.5 million Americans are living with Alzheimer's disease and the number grows every 66 seconds. And whereas Alzheimer's is the sixth leading cause of death in the United States and the only leading cause of death that cannot be cured or prevented. And whereas there is a need to raise awareness about Alzheimer's disease and to honor all the caregivers who support and care for loved ones with Alzheimer's disease. And whereas researchers are making great progress in developing ways to accurately diagnose and treat Alzheimer's disease, and we need to uh, accelerate that pace of the research. And whereas the Alzheimer's Association is asking residents of Dunedin to visit alz.org 
to learn more about Alzheimer's and to join the fight against the devastating disease by decorating their storefronts and spaces with purple, as well as to wear purple to raise awareness and to raise money to support the continuing care, support, and research of the Alzheimer's Association. Now therefore I, Jeff Gow, by the virtue of the authority vested in me by the Mayor of the City of Dunedin, and on behalf of the entire City Commission, do hereby proclaim June 4th, 2022, as Paint Dunedin Purple Day for Alzheimer's, and encourage all citizens to support those whose lives have been affected, to be a source of encouragement and to support the family members who are caring for those with Alzheimer's, and to strengthen and increase our efforts to win the battle against Alzheimer's disease. told me I didn't have a time limit. I didn't know that, so I can go on for an hour, right? I have a gavel. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Um, so this is the fourth annual Paint Dunedin Purple for Alzheimer's event. And as you know, last year was a pretty good year. We had over 60 businesses participate. We hope to have the same thing. Um, first of all, just thank you to the, the commissioners for you know, recognizing this as an important event, as an important cause. Um, you know, I saw a statistic recently, heart disease over the last 20 years has declined by like 7%. Alzheimer's deaths have increased by 145%. And that trend is exponential. It is just, it's crazy. And many of you have a connection to this disease. Mm -hmm. And what makes this event even happen beyond just an idea is the amazing business owners that do this year in, year out. Going into the fourth year where businesses put something together, some fundraising method to help and wear purple and try to raise awareness. Um, this is important work and, and it doesn't happen without these amazing business owners that come together and do this every year. So thank you to you guys for, for recognizing this event. Um, I'd like to thank Achieva, who's the first time presenting sponsor this year. You see the banner over Main Street. Um, and, and others, we're actually going to have a, a, an event in the park, in Pioneer Park, uh, the evening of the 4th. Uh, I've got a band and uh, some things going on there. And then House of Beer is actually doing an event on June 5th, the next day, a music fest there. And again, we're really trying to focus more on fundraising this year. We've been real big on awareness. Um, but I, I do want to say one thing that for people who are impacted by this disease, for people who have just found out a family member has it, there's a helpline with the Alzheimer's Association, 24-7, 365. It's 1-800-272-3900. If you need help, that's how you get to it. And uh, thank you very much. Thank you. Um, before, you before you go away, I, I do have a question. Um, I, I've been very interested that, that there was this new drug that was supposed to come out that would actually help with the uh, placking. Yes. I think it was to, but then it seemed like that it got into some, I know it was very, very, very expensive, so they didn't know if it was going to really be allowable to, to people to be able to try the benefits of this drug, and it seemed that it got in a controversy. Can you talk about that a little bit? I can, and I'll try to stay in my lane because I'm not an expert. Yeah, but I mean, you know. Right, I know. So the, uh, the drug that you're talking about is aducanumab. Takes a while to learn how to say that one. Yeah. Uh, the brand name is Aduhelm, which is a little easier to say. Um, so that drug is incredibly expensive. Mm -hmm. And it is available, but the way the approval has gone, it's only available to a certain criteria, a certain that meets certain criteria. So everybody doesn't, can't necessarily get at it. I, I don't know those parameters. I don't know that. Um, but the other piece was, will different, will insurance carriers, Medicare, and all of that pay for it? The, the most recent decision, I believe, is that Medicare has said no. Um, another issue the Alzheimer's Association lobbies for quite heavily is to make it more accessible. So there's hope where there was no hope because the research, again, very controversial, so I'll stay in my lane. Um, it seemed to help 
people. Um, and there's some debate about that. But it moves us in a direction where that type of drug that actually addresses the cause uh, would be incredibly helpful to many, many people. So it's the beginning. It's a huge step because before there just wasn't. Um, I'll stay in my lane. Thank you All very, right. very much. I, I think people And do, thank you for asking. That's but I, I, I think people do need to know that there ha there are new medical technologies. Maybe they're not perfect, they're too expensive now, but they're coming. They're coming. We're they're making coming. progress. I hate to say, you know, fundraising's not really my thing. This was an accident. Mm -hmm. uh, but without the money we can't do the research, we can't find a cure. That's correct. Thank you so much. You're thank very you. Welcome. Okay, uh, before we move on in the, into the agenda, I was just going to let anybody that know that if they were here for presentations, we will not, um, our feelings will not be hurt if you want to go ahead and leave. Run. <laughs> <laughs> now, you are more than welcome to stay. I just didn't want you to feel like, you know, at what point can we get out of here? She's just letting me know that we're, you know, they can leave. They don't have to stay to. I noticed They're our staff are, are not able to run. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they want to stay. They're happy to stay. I just know I have gone to so many meetings and I just kind of don't know when the appropriate time is. So I try to give people an out. Yeah, John and I are going to go too. You don't mind. <laughs> hey, go right ahead. <laughs> Yes, that didn't hurt you feeling very right? nah. We have our quorum. <laughs> yep, there you go. I know we have to be afraid what they'll do without us. <laughs> That's it. Okay. Um, next is citizen input. Anyone wishing to speak on any topic that is not already on the agenda, you're more than welcome to come forward. Anything that is on the agenda, you'll be able to speak to. Seeing or hearing none. Uh, we have the consent agenda, which is the approval of the minutes of 47 and 419, board and committee appointments to Causeway and Coastal Waterway, Edgewater Drive, um, Marina, Public Relations, Social Services, and Stormwater Advisory. And then there is the purchase of a um, MS500 ATV for 73000 there is um, the new city website um, and cloud system um, in the amount of 205000 um, over five years. There is the interlocal agreement with Pinellas County regarding um, conservation management plan. There is the first amendment to the water tower license agreement with uh, Verizon. And there is the Community Center HVAC Controls Retrofit Project. Go ahead, hit me. Which ones do you want to have pulled? Because I, I know somebody's going to pull something. I, I, I do have one. Which one? The interlocal agreement with Pinellas County. Okay. Um, I, I just thought that hey, yep. was such if, a... If you wouldn't have, I wouldn't have asked for it. No. Say what? If she wouldn't have asked for it, I wouldn't have. Okay, so that's the... the well, if they wouldn't have asked for it. No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> no, if they wouldn't have asked for it, we might get out of here 15 minutes earlier. <laughs> no, I'm just teasing. I'm just giving you a hard this time. I knew really, some... It, that was a long list. Cool. I knew something was going to get like pulled. The, I'd like the website one. Website? Okay. And I, I kind of thought that one might get pulled, too. Okay. So without 2D and 2E, can I have a motion to approve the consent agenda? So moved. Second. Vice Mayor Kynes and Commissioner Franey. Thank you. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes five to zero. We'll go first to our new city website and cloud system, which is um, Direct Communications Director Sue Burness. Did you, uh, you didn't want a whole presentation or anything. You had yeah, questions? Yeah, I mean, have like a 30 minute. Uh, Stop yeah, it. I'm just kidding. No, just a little bit of an overview is great. Welcome, Sue. Good morning, Mayor, Vice Mayor, and Commissioners. Um, I'm happy to discuss the uh, the future new website um, for the city of Dunedin. So you know I've been here for just a little over a year, and I've spent a good part of that year really um, assessing, learning, listening, uh, listening to our residents and staff, um, and assessing the tools. And you know, Jennifer brought me here, all of you brought me here to create a communications department and to 
elevate the communications for the city of Deneen to our publics. The website is very much like our new city hall. So we're building a new city hall, bricks and mortar. Um, we're all excited to have this public facility um, that will be the center of our government. The website is that virtual city hall. It is the hub. Um, it is where we allow residents and the public to have 24-7 access to information, to our programs. Um, and really, as um, a website, if we don't have a good functioning website, it doesn't matter how good our content is or our campaigns if people can't find it. There is also the user experience for the public to access that website and also the back end, which is our staff and the, the admins in the city who have to update our website and we have to take a team approach. Um, and so we've been very thoughtful over the last uh, Gosh, seven, eight, nine months. We really started this process last summer. We uh, vetted uh, four very, very good companies um, that are all focused and serve government agencies in web platforms, in web um, licensing. And so what we decided after all the months of, of research, and we involved other departments, especially our super users like the library and parks and recreation and community development, and um, and we all came to the conclusion that they, they would all provide us a great product, but the product that we chose is Open Cities, which is now owned by Granicus. So, you know, Granicus is a very large company. They continue to acquire to be a full service provider of everything for government. Um, and so we, uh, again, thoroughly vetted Open Cities. We really like the platform from a user experience. We really like the back end. It is much more... Um, user-friendly um, for those of us who will be updating. But one of the other um, uh, functions of Open Cities that we're buying is uh, open forms. And we have a very antiquated um, form system now, especially if any of you have had to uh, sign up your children with any of our parks and recreation programs. I used to really give Mo's partner a hard time about getting my kid into camps because yeah. we used to have to show up in person. Yeah, and then we got the wait all day. Yeah, wait all day. Yeah. in March, and then we had to do the antiquated forms, right. which weren't much better. So, so those forms are really inefficient for the user, for us as government, and and then think about the ADA compliance as well. So, um, Open Cities has this open form portal that uh, will allow us to digitize so many of our forms and create all those efficiencies. In fact, there are other cities that are using um, this platform now that have hard data on um, the efficiencies, money saving that they've created by staff you, with less time on the phone dealing with people in person. Not that we don't want to deal with people in per, in, you know, face to face, but we want to make it easy for someone to sign up their children or submit a permit and all of that. So the new platform is a big bundle, and, and um, so it's more than just a website. It is um, the website, it's the licensing, it's the information architecture. Information architecture is the heavy lift that we are actually buying their team services because honestly, we just don't have the depth on our team to take this on. It might take a lot longer to do. It's still going to be a multi-phase pro process. But information architecture is going to do the site design, the navigation. They're going to help us archive pages and pages of content that were brought over in 2017 that probably should have never been brought over. So we have a lot of stuff that we need to go through. Um, training, so important. So that is part of um, the bundle as well. So, and the other piece of it is an email notification, which is so much more advanced than what we currently have, which actually Granicus has sunsetted, the e-notify, but it is a CMS, government cloud system, which is an experience system that will also allow um, residents to opt in with a text message. So that's a whole new thing that we will be able to, to phase in um, in the months to come. So that was five of your 30. You got more. No, I'm just kidding. I always feel your energy, Sue. <clears throat> I thought this was important for us to put front and center because, for one thing, it's a couple hundred thousand dollars, but it's it's the biggest thing we do. You know, we can do everything if we can't communicate well 
it doesn't matter. Um, <clears throat> Sue, I noticed in the survey that we're going to talk about later that communication has gone up uh, in terms of how the citizens rate, um, how we communicate with them. And it seems to me this is just another level of a step, to, again, to be better <clears throat> and to try to, you know, come come to them with, with what's going to help them uh, communicate with us. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm just fully supportive of it. And uh, um, I was hoping to get a chance to talk with you yesterday about a few details about it, but I have so much faith in what you brought. You've been a game changer for communications for the city. So I look forward to this. How long do you think this is going to be to implement? Oh, goodness. Well, we hope to... A kick off the 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 whole project um, June first, um, knowing that it will probably take at least you know eight nine ten months. I mean, again, that is if we do all the things on our end. You know, they're going to give us homework. They're going to give us assignments. Um, they're going to lead us through this process, but we have a lot on our end to do. So, you know, we get very distracted, you know, on yeah, any you. given day or week. We won't talk about what distracts us, but we <laughs> right. get distracted. So, but we, we're going to take a team approach. Everyone is excited about this, and um, it, uh, it, it, it will, um, my goal um, based on that, that citizen survey, which I was pleased to see those results. But when the city platforms, especially the website, become the number one source where people get their information, that's when I know we've, we've done the job we need to do. Great. Thank you. I know you have something to say over there. Well, I'm just really excited. And from the minute that, that Sue started pitching this, she had me at hello, by the way. So, uh, <laughs> she had me at hello. Yes. That's a country western song. Yeah. Yes, it is. It, it, this really is everything that the five of you have been yeah. looking for. Well, and ironically, you and I were talking about it yesterday, and, and, and I said, well, I think we should pull this up this item. Mm. And she, I said, but are we going to get, you know, I said, I didn't see any kind of PowerPoint or anything in the, mm -hmm. you know, kind of show us what it looks like or whatever. Mm -hmm. She said, oh, no, you're going to get that later. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, well, then I'm not going to worry about it. Mm -hmm. And then she did. But anyway, I, I agree with everything you just and said. I'm holding back any micromanagement questions because mm -hmm. I'm fascinated no, no, with the no. whole way you're going to implement. And I know how you get pulled. Mm -hmm. right. I know how, you know, right. having, you know, a, great, a, a project manager on our side that had dedicated time would be great, but... That's not the world we live in, but yeah. But anyway, I'm right. not the, going there. Because no, no, I know. One thing I wanted to also that I forgot to mention is we're going to have a user tester group of residents. So I'm going to, um, I've been engaging uh, the practice. Can we committee. send you some names of people that we know use absolutely, the website? Absolutely, absolutely. I've engaged the PRAC committee through this whole process. In fact, they've sent Wonderful. through yeah. presentations yeah. with the vendors and um, understand the direction we're, we're going in. They want to be part of the process. Wonderful. And we'll have other um, uh, other residents that will be able to that the testing is very important and yeah. the feedback that we get yes, absolutely. anybody have any other questions yeah. for Sue I'll just sure. I, have, I, I have a question uh, yes, sort sure. of, uh, most of my questions were answered in my conversation with Jennifer over time and certainly yesterday and um, I just want I would just have a question for you to make sure that we someone just tossed out a two hundred thousand dollar number um, and it's just very fortunate that we were working with Granicus before, and this kind of wraps in together. That was the point that Jennifer made. And so as we got into that, realizing what we can get out of this whole program, it's so is it $200,000 win? It's over five years. Thank yeah. you. Yes, it is. I, I knew the answer to that. I just I wanted know. you to Thank give the answer. Thank you, Commissioner. <laughs> I appreciate that. It is over five years, and there are there are some one-time setup costs that are that are substantial, and they've been able to spread those out so that we can budget, you know, for the next five years. And then, of course, the licensing and some of the other products. You know, the, their annual fees that come with that as well. But it is over five years. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? I don't have a question. Go ahead if you have a comment. Okay. Um, I just wanted to thank you for um, PRAC's involvement. I thought that was very important. I think they've really, they're really blooming under your leadership. I think that they, for a while, didn't really feel that they were really plugged they didn't have a direction. in, tied in, and could really use their skills and talents. And I think that's really changed, and I appreciate it. I thank you. Well, thank you, and we've got a couple of new members that I'm very excited about as well, and there's an energy there, and this is, this is going to be a big project that they, I, they're, 
up for the challenge and I need them to, to really lead the testing and to be the eyes and ears um, of this whole process. So thank you. Yep, thank you. I couldn't be more excited. Yeah. Really, I couldn't be more excited. And um, I don't know if congratulations is the right word, but. Not yet. No, <laughs> yeah. no I, I know that, but what I, I it's like giving birth, right? I, I think there are probably a lot of our internal users that are like, thank God, finally, kind of thing. And I and over time, I think our residents will be saying the same, and that's the point. Um, because, you know, even when I go on there, the levels I have to go down into the website to find something is cumbersome. So I'm just so excited about it. And thank you for doing it. Thank you. Okay, can I have a motion to approve? So moved. Yeah. Second. Commissioner, oh, I'm sorry, did I skip no, you? No, I'm, no, I echo. Okay, Commissioner <laughs> Franey and Commissioner Tornga, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Thank you. And then the other item is the interlocal agreement with Pinellas County regarding Clearwater Harbor, St. Joseph Sound. Uh, the conservation and management plan, et cetera, et cetera. Good morning. Did you just have questions? Who pulled it? I think hey. you pulled it. Did well, you just have questions uh, or? I just think that this has been a long time in coming. You know, we, because when you talk about what goes into St. Joseph Sound or what goes into the harbor, you're talking about tribu tributaries also. It's not just runoff, it's also Curlew Creek. You know, it's also some of these tributary waters that end up. And so I just, you know, how long ago did we start that, looking at? 10 or 12 years 10 ago. 10 or 12 years Something ago. To so effect. to me, this was a real win to be able to see this level of particip participation with the county, Swift Mud, and nine municipalities. I mean, that that's a huge win for our surface waterways. So... And at this point, this is just the NPDES. I know that right. word. This is just the, the agreement to do the update assessment, correct. correct? They haven't correct. done it yet. Yes. yes. And what can you just give us the bullet point version of the kinds of things they're going to be doing? Absolutely. Good morning, Good Mayor, morning. Vice Mayor, Commissioners, City Administration. My name is Michelle Monteclaro. I'm the Stormwater Program Coordinator. The Clearwater Harbor St. Joseph Sound Conservation Comprehensive Management Plan is a four-year water quality study. Wood Environmental is our consultant. And really, when we think of the study, there are five major components. It's we're reviewing our existing water quality data and our watershed data. We're creating a targeted water quality monitoring plan. And then we're monitoring for a two-year period. And after that, we'll do our data analysis and we'll look at you know, what's really going on. A report and management recommendations is generated from the study. So we'll have these tools once this four year period is over. Um, gosh, something just flipped through my brain. Things flip through my brain very easily now. <laughs> well, you think about it. You'll give us an action plan at some point, right? Correct, yes. Well, again, I, I just thought that this, this was a real win. Um, oh, I know what it was. I was not aware we were considered an impaired, it was considered an impaired water bodies. Correct. St. Joseph Sound and Clearwater Harbor are considered an impaired water body according to the Florida watered, water impaired rule. Um, it does not meet certain water quality criteria, essentially. Okay, thank you. I mean. That's important. Did you all know that? That we've been on the impaired for 30 I years? Mm -hmm. I did not know that. Mm -hmm. Commissioner? Um, yeah, I, I did not know that. Um, no, I'm, I'm excited as well. I know that there are other organizations that do fabulous studies of old Tampa Bay and down around the peninsula, and it all kind of seemed to always stop at Clearwater. And so trying to get any information north on the quality of the water, sea grasses, oyster beds, always seem to be kind of challenging. So um, the, the, the idea that uh, Dunedin and St. Joseph Sound is going to get some real attention is, is exciting and justified. Anything on this end? 
far as questions go, um, it, it's, it's interesting how the study goes for such a long period of time, it seems. And of course, we know what's happened to us trying to dive for those little varmints that we try to capture. We have to go all the way up to Apalachicola. Oh, I'm, I'm kidding, but we have to go a long ways up because it's we've affected this. And I know we've been working on this, I, I think, since at least 2012 uh, in, trying to, in trying to lower these levels. And I'm just wondering, um, just perhaps some input. Um, and so it's, it's not so much of a question, but it's input. Um, and a question, could, could, we not, could we not maybe shorten that up just a little bit if, if we are looking to determine um, what the status is so that we could correct what, what we believe we're going to discover? I mean, I don't think it's, it's, it's not necessarily improved, but I don't know that yet. That's why you're doing the study. But that seems like a long time period. Um, and again, and again, perhaps you'd be a proponent of my renaming this area to the Dunedin Sound. I would appreciate your consideration in that. I I'm think, always trying and never stop. I think when it comes to monitoring our waterways, we need a period of time. We need more time to understand the different dynamics of water quality, our seagrass, our sediment, when we're looking at the water column, you know, it's so dynamic. So having a longer period of time, two years, is a good amount of time to understand, you know, what those different dynamics are and, and to analyze. It's really an analysis part of it because you're collecting, but you're also analyzing. So those two, that has a strong relationship, those two components. So we need the time to do that. So this is a four-year, a four-year uh, situation, and I was I was just asking if there's a way that that would be could be sped up, but but you're saying no. For, that we could have an active an active uh, uh, response to what we uh, what, what we at least initially discover over a period of maybe the first two years or something. But right. you, you're saying no, that's just not not the way it normally works. For the integrity of the study, I think that the four year period is. You know, because it's it's a matter of also getting a consultant on board, and then you know understanding the existing data, but then also going out and creating a plan, and then collecting the data, and then analyzing it. So there is, in terms of that scientific process or method, that it was understood that that would be the appropriate time frame for that type of work. Thank you. Nice try, John. No anything comment that, about my I don't have anything so. now. It's a good thing we're doing. I don't have any questions. Go ahead. Just a follow-up. Uh, great questions, John. Thank you. And it just made me think that with this plan, are we going to have to wait four years to find out what that data says? Or as we're collecting and analyzing the data over the years, if we're finding places where we can improve the quality, well, can we start to implement them at that time, or, or do we have to wait four years and get a report, and then take another three years to go through the report and make a decision on how? So it's all of a sudden eight years away, and we really haven't done anything. So there, and I'm exaggerating. There will be updates to this study. We do have a working group where we're, we're going to have updates on, you know, what our our analysis says and have you know all the municipalities and our partnerships kind of ha start the conversation it's not we do it for four years and then we report it's okay. we are going to have the conversations we are going to have the discussions we are going to understand really what you know is going on in st joseph sound and clearwater harbor north and south so it's not you know we're silent for four years we will um i will providing you all updates and while this is four years, because I mean, I just I'm a believer that we should always be studying and analyzing the the, the sound and, and the Gulf, all of our waters. Uh, so, and I know that it's way too early to tell and talk about this, but is there any opportunity that this can be an ongoing thing? So, separate from the study, we right. are working with Pinellas County. They are monitoring our waters th since. 1994 we've been monitoring our waters we have an ambient water quality monitoring program that looks specifically at water quality so in st joseph sound clearwater harbor north and south it's every eight weeks there is a collection period so they are going out and collecting they are reporting the data on the tampa bay water atlas 
So residents, if they want to understand what's going and going on in St. Joseph Sound or Clearwater Harbor, the Tampa Bay Water Atlas is a great resource for everyone. So how is this, how is this specific study different than what's currently going on? The reason why this study is being conducted is because in the recent years we're seeing elevated levels of total nitrogen in St. Joseph Sound and Clearwater Harbor. So there is a call to action to understand why are we seeing these higher concentrations of total nitrogen. Thank you. Um, thank you. And I know that you guys will keep us posted if, if you see something that's alarming. But I think the interesting thing is, is this is a, um, this is a group effort. This is not just Dunedin. You know, this is Clearwater. I'm assuming it might be a little bit north, uh, north of the bridge as well. Tarpon. You know, that area as well. So we don't own all of that. You know, that is, we're just contributing factors. And there are an enormous amount of um, creeks and I don't know all the correct terms, but water bodies that go into that area that you know, either carry stormwater or other things. And so there's just a lot going on um, from a lot of places. And so I totally agree that you have to have that working group, and I'm glad to hear that, so that you can all be talking, because it doesn't help if we're doing something and somebody else isn't. Right, yes. Um, so anyway, I'm excited that we're going to be doing this, and you all will keep us posted if everybody sees something really alarming. Um, and it's nice to hear from you. Thank you. I think this might be your first. Yeah, is this your first presentation? Job. This is my first. Well, welcome. Yes, Thank you. Welcome. You're welcome. battle tested now. Yeah. <laughs> you know what? I'm sorry. Go ahead. Okay. This. It's a real question. Okay. Um, has nitrogen been shown to have any um, connection with red tide? So there is a relationship between total nitrogen and growth in algae or plankton, which is, a, plankton is considered a red tide. So there is a relationship there that total nitrogen can, we don't know when, but can. We don't know at what level. Correct, or, or what concentration or beneficial, or correct. never, maybe never beneficial unless it stays at a very low level. Correct, yes. Okay, well thank you. Thank you. I'm sorry, most sources of nitrogen are coming from fertilizer? Fertilizer, um, you know, possibly reclaimed water, um, you know, bacteria. We're seeing a lot of things, even trash. Even there is a, a natural nitrogen cycle as well that we have to take into consideration. So ex extra inputs of nitrogen into our waters can lead to more growth in right, and that's why the county implemented the fertilizer, fertilizer. Ban. ban over the summer, the rainy months. Correct. Because of the, you know, outfall. If I may, though, do they do they ban uh, nitrogen the entire time? I mean, I know you can't find. You, it's very hard to find any fertilizer with nitrogen in it's it. It's phosphorus that's banned. The total Pardon? phosphorus is banned the whole throughout the whole season. From June year. 1st, September, September 30th. June. I thought it was, uh, I, I can't, you can't find it in the spring in most of the stores here. That's right. I don't know. I'm not sure. June through, Is that correct? June through September. June through but she's September. saying phosphorus, he's saying nitrogen, so. Okay. So for, for phosphorus, it's June 3rd through September 30th. For phosphorus, I believe it's throughout the whole year. You just said the same thing. I'm sorry. You mean nitrogen? Nitrogen. Nitrogen, yes. I'm sorry. Gotcha. That's okay. So, you know, they have taken those active steps, and, and we have accepted that in our city. I don't know how it gets enforced, and that might be an issue, excuse me, in the future to address. But Well, Pinellas County enforces the fertilizer ban for the entire county. Right. But I'm saying I don't know how often that happens. I, you know what I'm saying? There's a lot. I mean, they're just like we are in the sense of, you know, being low on staff level and how do you get it enforced. And so that might be something you discover along the way. 
Okay, can I have a motion to approve this agreement? So moved. Second. Vice Mayor Kynes and Commissioner Gal, thank you. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Thank you very much. All right, move on to action items. We now have the Arts and Culture Advisory Committee continuance. Um, anything you want to add, Rebecca? No. Okay. So uh, I think we have Nicole and Nicole. Jackie, Jackie and and um, Elizabeth. Yep. And anyone else that wants to come forward? Well, I was just thinking, as a member of the aged community, mm -hmm. there should be a chair here. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Madam Mayor, <coughs> commissioners <coughs> and staff, good morning. Good morning. Jackie Nigro, Chair of the Arts and Culture Advisory Committee. <clears throat> Excuse me, old age. <laughs> Over my years with and during my tenure as Chair of the Committee, I can only say with, cer I, with certainty, finally, Dunedin has public art. We have public art on walls. We have public art on the sidewalks. We have public art on bus stops, on benches, and we have mosaic art walls in our park. And we will soon have public art nearly touching the sky on our cur Curlew Water Tower and sculptures soon to be adorning the front entrance of our new city hall. We have public art. And by having a wide range of artworks in various locations, incorporating our history and our culture, our city continues the march forward as an art destination city. So much so that private film companies now come to our shores to make films and attend the Dunedin International Film Festival, and visitors make beneficial use of our art walk evenings and our other cultural events and celebrations. We are drawing the public into a Dunedin experience. Mayor, you, our commissioners, city staff, and residents and businesses, have all supported it. Thank you very much. The question as to continuing our Arts and Culture Advisory Committee, is it even a question? I ask because there is still new, continuous work to be done to maintain momentum, to name but a few. In the next month, we have the completion and dedication of our Curlew Water Tower mural, Henry and Sylvia, Sylvia by St. Petersburg artist Tom Stovall, followed by installation of the new Government Center art piece, The Sea, by Utah artist Heath Satow and its subsequent dedication in September, then the Jaywalk Sidewalk Mural Project, although momentarily suspended, will we re resume in the fall. The wastewater wall on Douglas now has new energy and is ready to go forward. And the City Hall Gallery Program, under the curation of Mary Childs and Elizabeth Brinklow, will of course continue indefinitely. Looking to the future, we have sustainable guidelines for our art in our public art master plan, which is led of course by Epic Goals 1 and 2. With all this activity, the PAMP requires some revision to address current issues in order to keep up with our public art pram, uh, program. For example, an updated percent for art 
formula is required to fund art commissions and acquisitions. I mean, we do want art throughout Dunedin, don't we? Mural guidelines need to be formalized and specif specifications guiding city government department public art costing less than $3,000. And that brings to mind the recent Parks and Rec mural on its property on Solon. But I believe the question before you should not be, should we renew the Arts and Culture Committee? Rather, the question should be, what more do we need to do, can we do, to further enhance, propel, and sustain our city as a cultural destination? I would like to offer two items, just two, for your consideration that I and others on the Arts and Culture Committee and residents, we've heard from residents, believe will further support our EPIC goals and about which we have spoken previously. First, we have spoken for some years about art in all the corridors and which is noted in our public art plan. We have talked a lot. Now we need to act. We now must focus on the corridors that we are frequently hearing about, and I speak specifically of Patricia, Skinner, and the Causeway. And secondly, we need a professional theater facility. We need a theater that can host a venue for poetry readings, to drama and comedy, from children's theater to music, dance, and film. Sorry. I didn't mean to make you sneeze. Oh, sorry. <laughs> we need professional productions and space for community work. We do not need a Straz nor a Ruth Eckert Hall. What we need is a modest 200 to 250 seat capacity very arts and entertainment focused on all the arts and culture dimensions that will continue our march forward. And while we do not envision a public-private project art, try that one, partnership, we do envision and invite city government alignment and support. A professional theater facility with appropriate programming is the only asset our city does not have and which will balance and round out the offerings of our city. Permit me for just a moment to share the benefits of such a culture venture. A professional theater will provide economic development through increased tourism, jobs for performers, and staff, and boost surrounding business by visibility and economic multiplier impact into our community. It will provide a new social activity in Dunedin to improve overall well-being and mental health. Theatres have been linked to opportunities of enjoyment, stress relief, and multicultural connections through shared experiences. It will increase diversity, acceptance, and free expression, and provide an educational hub for our children and grandchildren to view on stage the possibilities in life and explore their imaginations. In conclusion, Madam Mayor, commissioners, city staff, Residents and businesses, all of you collectively have made great strides in moving our Dunedin into a cultural destination city. It is my hope that I have shared with you what the Arts and Culture Committee actually does and has accomplished and what more needs to be done and the way ahead. So then, I speak with the Arts and Culture Advisory Committee's full support when I say we have blended the city's rich past, 
are creating an ever vibrant present and a tantalizing and enriched future. Thank you. Thank you, Jackie. Anything you would like to add, Nicole? I don't think I can. Elizabeth? <laughs> <laughs> Anything? Okay, does anybody have any questions? You're our art liaison, anything that you? Well, you know, um, I'm very interested in your performing arts um, center idea. Would, would, does that idea encompass the ability to also show films? Yes, it would. It, it would, would be a full. I mean, because, you know, there's, there's some very small venues I've seen that show wonderful films that you really can't find, uh, you know, in the major cinema houses. And uh, I think, you know, Chautauqua, for instance, it's a very small theater, but they show some of the more interesting films that are, are very thought provoking. And um, so I'm, I'm just wondering if that, uh, you're planning that that would be also a part of uh, the I would say totally palette. encompassing. I mean, Elizabeth, see, please. Um, Elizabeth Brinklow, thanks for having us this morning. Um, the idea is to have a multiple range of programming. So from dance to film to live performing arts, um, TYA, children, uh, theater for young audiences, film, um, poetry, every aspect of the uh, public art, performing arts arena. And Elizabeth, because I know you were so involved in performing arts in St. Pete, have you heard about the poetry out loud? I know you have in St. Pete that yes. Steve Seibert's very involved yes. in. Yeah. Are we doing anything? Could we bring that to Well, there's here? a conversation in Arts and Culture Advisory Committee right now about uh, poetry. Um, Paige McBride yep, just recently Paige. received, actually Saturday, received her master's oh. in poetry mm -hmm. from St. Leo University. And she's very interested in creating an event um, that has only just begun taking shape in conversation, though. Mm -hmm. But yes. I thought that was a very interesting program. Thank you. Thank you for all you're doing. Any questions, Commissioner? Um, when do we start? Yeah, no, no questions. So as far as the theater goes, well, first of all, there's like no reason to continue this committee, is there? There's nothing to do, right? Oh, right. Because <laughs> that is why we're here, right? <laughs> I mean, you're the only one that comes forward, Jackie. It's just like not only like the expectation is there, like you're continuing it. Now, come on, here's the next level. Um, so with the theater, though, like, because I just don't know this, like what kind of group is behind it? Um, is there some money behind it as, you know? There's a lot of momentum right now with a small core group of people. Um, Didn't you just all fly to Sarasota? There That's were, beauty. yes. We uh, spoke with uh, one of the potential architects, um, primarily to tour a facility there called Rosemary Square, um, which encompasses uh, retail, an anchor restaurant, uh, housing for artists with the Sarasota Ballet, and a number of other um, uh, arts organizations. There are approximately five that fit into that. Um, it's about an acre of land that is encompassed. And that also includes some parking. Um, but that was the purpose of the trip to really to view that particular space and how that was modeled and to see if that's something that would work for us. And I think in a, a smaller form, perhaps. Um, but the, the, truly, the focus is on uh, developing a feasibility plan uh, and a business plan to make sure that as we go to donors that we have the opportunity to um, validate what it is we want in every way. I mean, I, truthfully, I mean, I, I think I shared this with you. I went to Nantucket last summer, first time. Well, I loved it. But they have a theater. It's probably 150, maybe 200 seats, but I'm thinking 150. And they rent from a historic church that had a church hall that that part they didn't need, so they made a pretty good deal with the with the nonprofit theater group, and um, I think it's, they've been there for years. And and um, I mean, it's pretty awesome. I mean, it does a lot for the community. I think so. Um, so yeah, I mean, there's nothing, you know, great minds brainstorming. Who knows what happens at the end of the road? So um, thank you. Any questions? Yeah, are there? Are there specific thoughts about a specific location or a general location 
within the city of where this might take place? I've been asked that question as I talk about that subject uh, as frequently as last weekend. So um, is, is there any? We're exploring locations. <laughs> Is there, is there, is there a, a sort of a prerequisite as to where this might be then? Is it more directed towards the downtown or is it? Well, we're not opposed to moving it a little bit because off of, you know, sort of the crossroads at Pioneer Park, there's certainly an opportunity to move beyond that because we do want just as public art is for everyone, we want to be able to have the public, uh, the performing arts facility to be available to everyone, and that includes access. Um, so finding a suitable location with access is pretty key. What, what is, is there, uh, I've often thought about this, is there any opportunity to, to gather together with a particular church, not, a, a total, this is a total non-denominational concept mm -hmm. or thought, but to get together with some church who certainly uses the performing art part of it during one small section of the of, of the time that we're talking about of seven days a week? Well, I don't yeah. think space is actually the question. Okay. Providing the professional theater facility, uh, the operations, the lighting, the sound, um, a proper dance floor, to be able to get all those elements together, I don't think you know any of the venues right now that we have in the city offer that. No, no, I, so, I, I'm saying getting together with one of them to cause that to be. Um, it's just a thought. I just thought I'd throw that out. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Well, first of all, of course we want to continue you all. We've got a lot of work to do. And Is this question time? Because I have a statement. If this is, I'm just saying. I'm just, I always well, have a question. So if there's oh, statements, I know, I know I'm making say. a statement. She's so. going to say, I always screw up. If you're going into she statements, was heading I'm towards this I'm, I don't have a question. Go right ahead. <laughs> I'm <at>. teasing <laughs> Go right ahead. I'll wait another 30 minutes. No, we're <laughs> No, if you're going to separate question and statement, then you have well, to be clear. Well, in, in the <laughs> continuance part, I yes. didn't think that was necessary. But okay, go okay. right ahead. Have a statement. Well, no, I want to make a statement. Go. I want to thank Jackie. I want to thank Nicole. I want to thank Elizabeth for the amazing job you're doing. And, of course, I'm for the continuance of it. Um, I think that you've just, you know you guys just epitomize, you know, what can really work so great in a committee. I mean, you, you work as a great team, you've got a lot of energy, the passion's there, and it shows. It shows in, in what we've done. And, um, you know, just one thought I put into your heads, like as I look at it, and I think you guys are right on it, trying to really make sure we're diversifying where we're putting art. You know, the old less is more. We don't want too much all in one place, and then we start to look junky. So, and it sounds like you're already you know, that's already in your head. So um, other than that, and obviously the theater thing, you know, obviously it's all about money, right? And um, and, and it's gonna take a, a groundswell of, of citizen support and dollars to make it happen, but I certainly am supportive of it because I think it does add a lot to the community. But in terms of just thank you, all of you, for and, and the whole committee for what they do. Any final comments, John? Jackie Liz, thanks. Did you ever ask? Your I never got my. No, I was coming. She said she wasn't Go right ahead. I, I'm trying to see back you. Go right question. ahead. Okie dokie. Um, you know, I have always been really bad about the questions and comments, and she always tells me. So I apologize for that. Um, you know, I, I, I really do like the idea of, you know, having a place that we would have, we would be able to offer those type of services to our community. Um, we don't have the perform, we do have the performing arts with our extraordinary Scott, Scott's culture, absolutely, our bands. And uh, I know that we have a very strong uh, and growing uh, children's theater. Uh, she's wonderful. She works so hard to do that. We have the International Film Festival. But uh, to bring it, to focus it, you know, a place that, that many of these things could uh, go out to the community, I think would be uh, really extraordinary. Of course, I was going to say, are we sitting at the right place? I, I knew I wasn't going to get any comments. Is this the place? I don't know. I don't know. You just couldn't help yourself. Could I you? couldn't help myself. 
But um, anyway, I do, of course, we're going to continue. Thank you all so much for your efforts. I can't wait to see Sylvia and um, Henry. 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 I cannot wait to see them. I know it's going to be uh, really superb. Any final comments, Commissioner? Uh, just my continued uh, admiration and appreciation for the work that uh, not only you ladies do, but the entire committee. And it is just amazing not just to watch you work, but to listen to you work and the collaboration and the ideas and, and how do we get it done kind of uh, uh, approach. Uh, you certainly know where I stand on, on, on the theater. And it's uh, just the continuing conversation and the conversation moving forward is, is just exciting. And, you know, uh, within all of our community schools, um, middle school, high school, band, orchestra, drama, musicals, we all earned superior, straight superior in any competition that we had this, this year. It's amazing. The high school just put on a musical, The Adams Family, and it is being nominated for, I think it is seven different categories of awards uh, w within our, our school system. And so it's just amazing the amount of art in, in, in our city, the amount of uh, performing arts in our city. And that's not even uh, including our, our Scottish community and our pipe bands and, and, and what they do in our dance and Highland dance and, and everything. So just, just, just thank you. And, and DFAC, our, our fine arts as well, uh, absolutely. And just, Jackie, thank you uh, for stepping forward and just taking the question off the table. And so that uh, you, you came in strong, so thank you for that. <laughs> That's the jacket. I'm not sure what else to say. But yes, I do want to see the continuance. And I do appreciate um, all the work that you all have done. Jennifer, I, certainly at some point, and maybe it's during um, our budget cycle, I would like to understand what sort of what our coming year and the next couple of years, what our, what our plan of contribution is mm -hmm. and what that is meant to cover. So well, I've been working on okay, that. so you're going to give us a little information. All right, that's that's what I'd like to understand. Great, that's good. The other thing I would just like to say, I do think that the, you know, the idea of the theater. I appreciate folks just sort of taking that and running with it. But I do think it is a public-private partnership. I don't think it's something that government can do on its own. Um, and and I do not mean to be the water on the fire. But we have not one dime put aside for this, nor do we have it available to us at this moment with our current plans. So it doesn't mean that it won't evolve, is what I'm trying to say. I think we have to see what it is. Um, but the excitement of it is great. I just want to make sure expectations are, you know. You mean I was trying to say what she said. She just did it in a much better way. <laughs> yeah, but you know what? <laughs> but I, I love the fact like just last weekend that you all flew down to Sarasota on your own dime just to check things out. I mean, that's, that's cool. pretty special when people, you know, gravitate towards an, an idea, a working group is together, um, talking about it. And, and of course, you're our um, contracted advisor on all things art. And so you've involved yourself in that. And I really appreciate that. I think... We've got all the right people at the helm. Um, and I'm just excited to see what, what happens over the next couple of years. Just to clarify and kind of calm your nerves about the public-private partnership, specifically we know there is no city funding, and therefore we are moving ahead. But we are requesting alignment and support, and that support comes in a variety of ways. So that's just to kind of clarify yeah. and kind of your, oh, OK. <laughs> well, I mean, I thought I heard Jackie say earlier today, we don't want a public-private. That's what I thought I heard her say. She said it, it, it is not a public-private partnership. At right, but what I, so what that said to me was you wanted us to put it in the budget. That's what I thought that was saying to me, which is why I'm saying what I'm saying. We don't have right. any money. Uh, n not at this time. There's not an expectation of that. Got that. And um, that comes with a, a lot of other uh, issues and items that uh, we just felt that there is enough support. We are getting 
a lot of support right. to move this forward. So that's what we're doing. I, and please don't take any of my comments in any negative way. I just wanted to, I just wanted to make sure I understood what Jackie was saying and what you were saying and what we were saying. I think we're all supportive of the idea. It's how do we get there? Um, I'm, again, I'm just so impressed that on that one issue that, um, but that's who we are. When our residents want something, they get together and they figure out how to accomplish it. And, and that's special. That, that is really special. You have all done that on the Arts and Culture Committee by bringing the public art master plan here, you know, putting that together and having that done. That was something that happened when Jennifer came because it was something she had in her other cities and um, she really, you know, it had been something we talked about a long time, so I'm not saying it wasn't on the table, but I think. We didn't know how to do I it. I think Jennifer exactly. just came in and said, oh no, we need to do this. Um, and so I'm just really excited about all the steps because it is really, life changing is not the word, but it was a significant change in our community to how it looks and how it feels and, how, and who it attracts. And so that's really exciting. And the Arts and Culture Committee, Nicole and Elizabeth and everybody on the committee are a significant part of that. And you are definitely a working committee. So I appreciate that a lot. And we have another member too, a deputy member over there. <laughs> <laughs> well, she loves it too. So um, I'm just really excited at everything that you all do. Really, I am. I think it makes such a difference in our community. Um, and I'm very in favor of everyone continuing for the next three years. So can I have a motion to approve? So moved. Second. Okay, Vice Mayor Kynes and Commissioner Gao. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Thank you, ladies. Good job. Good job. Okay, we have the uh, annual comprehensive financial report for the year ending September 30th, 2021. Les and Jeff, come tell us the good news. And just, I, I just want to remind everybody that it's almost 10.30. We don't have a lot of time left. We have a, a large customer survey, um, and we've already been told that there are two uh, commission discussion items. So not that this is not really important, but let's not spend 30 minutes talking about it. It's all good news. It's, it's all good I news. So just tell us the good news quickly. <laughs> We We're will. not going to jail. No. <laughs> so that's <what> oh, God. <laughs> I'm teasing. Things yes, not to say on a commission. Yeah, no, I mean, jeez. Okay. No, it's all good news. Go ahead, okay, please. We'll be and brief. congratulations, Les. Uh, good morning, Mayor, Vice Mayor, Commissioners. Uh, Les Tyler, the Director of Finance. I'm happy to be here today to present the fiscal year 2021 CAFR uh, to the commission. I'd like to recognize the finance team who prepared this report. Uh, they are uh, Ross Adair, our accounting manager, and Scott Caterson, who was our senior accountant at the time. Scott's recently gone to fleet. Uh, they prepared the, the document together with some assistance from other finance uh, team members. Ross is with us today, and I want to mention uh, what a great job he does as, as our accounting manager. He's been with us for just over three years now. He has a lot of experience and very knowledgeable in governmental finance and accounting, and a very dedicated team member, and Ross is Behind me, uh, behind Paul, uh, in the back there, in a blue shirt. Uh, <laughs> and uh, so anyway, I want to point him, I want to recognize him and all, all of his efforts. This is a very large document. It's, uh, it, it shows our, the detailed information for our city's financial position at September uh, 2021. And I'd like to turn it over to Jeff to go over the audit. Thank you. Um, good morning, and I'm just happy to be here again um, and, and to serve as your external auditors. Um, but with that, I'll, I'll get started right away. Um, first, you should have a handout, the required communication letter. Um, again, you know, you, you, you've had it. I won't go into too much detail, but it really just states our responsibilities of the audit, management's responsibilities, um, what we consider significant disclosures, and the fact that we had no difficulties encountered uh, during the audit. Um, next, I'll cover is our, um, our audit report. This is a rep report on whether the, the financial statements are materially correct. 
Um, we had an unmodified opinion, which I know that doesn't sound anything spectacular, but that is the highest level of insurance it you is. can receive. That, that is a clean opinion, so that's something definitely to be proud of. Um, and uh, this is going to be repetitive, so I apologize for that. It's okay. Just yep. And our next is our report on internal control. Um, now, we don't do enough testing to uh, issue an opinion, but if we, if we noted any findings or any material weaknesses or significant deficiency of internal control, they would be in this report. Um, no findings, no issues noted. Um, next, uh, you met the state single audit threshold, meaning you had $750,000 in expenditures of state financial assistance. Um, this report is also, again, no findings, no issues noted, uh, clean opinion. Next is our independence accountants report. Um, that relates to um, compliance with Florida statutes as it relates to investments. Um, again, um, no findings, no issues noted. Lastly is our management letter. Um, this is a report required by the Auditor General that um, deals with financial condition, if there's any issues with um, financial emergency or if we had any other uh, recommendations and improvements. But again, this was a clean report, um, no issues noted. Um, briefly, and based on time, I'll just kind of do really quick some high-level financial information. Um, really, the, 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 the points I want to, to, to uh, show really is your um, unrestricted net position, a part of governmental activities. This is your ability to fund your, your ongoing expenditures, and it's 29.2% uh, in the current year, um, which was up from 199 in the prior year. So again, uh, improvements uh, in the current year for the governmental activities. And your business type activities um, also increased to 109.4 percent um, compared to 97.7 in the previous year. Um, next is just your comparison of the general fund, um, which was, you know, you, as you know, your main operating fund. And uh, I'll just go quickly to your unassigned and uh, assigned and unassigned fund balance of total expenditures. This is really what's available um, of you know, to meet your ongoing uh, needs in your budget in the, in the next year. And this increased from 21.3% from 17.5% in the prior year. So again, um, your, your reserves uh, increased in the current year. Um, just comparisons on your, your budget. Um, you saw a, a million dollar um, favorable balance um, in your revenues uh, exceeded your budget. And then your um, expenditures were 2.2 under your budget. Uh, <coughs> overall, you had a favorable variance of 3.2 um, compared to your budget. Some just your significant proprietary funds, and really, I'll just kind of go to what your operating income was. Um, pretty consistent. Um, in your water and sewer, it was 1.4 million in the current year compared to 0.8 in the prior year. So some improvement there. Um, your stormwater had a, an operating loss of 0.5 million, um, but was pretty consistent to last year, which was a 0.4 uh, million dollar loss in the in the prior year. And lastly, on the stormwater, um, you had a 0.3 operating income compared to 0.1 in the prior year. So overall, pretty consistent. Um, so again, you know, it was a, a very clean audit. Um, you know, the uh, Les and his team does a great job. Um, you know, I, and I. I do want to mention one thing I, I missed in required communications. Um, we had no corrected or uncorrected misstatements, meaning we had no adjustments from the trial balance provided to us. So I, I, that's always important to note that, you know, that um, when you re request financial information, you can rely on that information because our audit, you know, isn't, isn't uh, generating any audit adjustments. So that's just an important thing to note. And then for next year, you have got some significant um, standards coming into play. Um, GASB 87 related to leases will be implemented next year. So that's a significant task for you know, the finance department. And also the, the ARPA funds will come into play on the federal side of the single audit. So that's some, uh, two important items to note for next year. But with that, I'll open it up to any questions or comments. Any questions? Not a question. You can have questions or comments. Okay, with this, I'll just move wanna, forward with my comment. <laughs> we want to get through it. You know, um, I did want to say that, and and you know, I, I'm sorry to be facetious, but we do the budget, and then just as a real control, we go to an independent auditor. So that's how we keep out of trouble because we go through the budget. We have extraordinary extraordinary expertise with Ashley, with Les, I mean, we trust you all. But then we also have this second control mechanism where we are independently audited. And um, 
another thing I was very impressed with, we went from a, you know, to, it reminds me of batteries, but we went from an AAA to an AAA plus. And credit that's rating. a that's credit a rating. big deal, you know. And uh, I wanted to highlight that part of it too. So thank you very much, Commissioner. Oh, uh, thank you, Mayor. Yeah, just real quickly, you know, we talk about our epic goals and why they're epic, and the fact that why we don't have infrastructure as part of our epic goals, just because yeah, that's expected and that that's a given, and especially with uh, the the trust on. Uh, for our residents and their ability to trust us with the finances. Um, this is really huge. Uh, their, their trust in us is, is uh, those, those epic goals. And so the fact that we can provide uh, a report of this stature is, is amazing. So thank you guys for what you do. Appreciate it. Yeah, no, I, I don't have any questions. I, this is a nice, clean audit. Congratulations, Les, and to your team. Um, and uh, yeah, yeah, it's important. I mean, like I think Commissioner Gauss said, I mean, when we look at the baseline of what we do, we've got to be responsible with taxpayers' dollars and, and make sure we've got good systems in place to protect them. And, um, and this is a good clean audit. So thank you. Commissioner? Clean audit, thank you. Same way I feel. Um, and I'm just assuming I'm, I only need a head nods from somebody. Uh, I'm assuming, aren't we looking at our stormwater rates? Yeah. So that's why the loss right now. Yeah, and we've known that, so. And it was for two years. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's not anything we did wrong. We just haven't, we're working on that rate study. I'm assuming we'll talk about it through the budget, right? Yes. Gotcha. Thank you so much. Appreciate everything you do. Congratulations, Les. I am sure you are quite happy. Um, you and your folks, Scott and everybody else. Um, Ross. 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 Ashley. No, I, I know. I'm, I just giggle every time you say Scott Caterson because I grew up with the guy. You know, I, I know him that way. So when I see him as a senior accountant, it's just a little different for me. Um, anyway, thank you to all of you and congratulations. We appreciate it. Um, can I have a motion to accept the annual financial So report? moved. Second. Commissioner Franey and Commissioner Tornga, thank you. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Thank you. Well done, Liz. And and I just anybody watching on TV, um, I haven't been a asking for public input because we don't have anybody in the public except one person, and I didn't think he was going to get up and speak on anything. But if I have skipped you on something that you wanted to speak on, you're more than welcome to. Yeah, I'm, you're the only person that's not a staff member in here. <coughs> okay, that's what I, I kind of thought that, but so I just wanted people to know why I hadn't been asking, because there isn't anybody here. Um, the proposed agenda for June 7th work session, everybody okay with that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, can I have a motion to approve? So moved. Second. Okay, Vice Mayor and Commissioner Chwanga, thank you. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passed unanimously. Let's take a break before we get into our customer citizens' opinion survey. Um, oh, yep. All right.
going back to order. Okay, we were just discussing the going back to the agenda. So let's just take a look at that real quick. Um, okay, so meeting lease agreement. Annual review, okay, and the Eden Club transition. How did we do it the last time? Did we do it in the beginning under presentations? We did it at the end of the meeting. We did it at the end. At the end. At the end of the meeting, we all went out and ra and, okay. and put up the flag. But it would be kind of nice to have it there formally. That like right? No, no, no. Meeting, That's what I'm saying. Gonna... No, I, I would like to see that too. Um, it just kind of seems like it should be under presentations. But it could say, because, I mean, that seems like the Do we want to raise it on the 7th? Because if we're reading the proclamation on the 9th, it's still light at that particular time to go out and raise the flag. <clears throat> it's not like it's dark like at, in the winter months. So with the committee, we talked about doing it like we did last year, which was we raise it at the end of the work session, but then the proclamation is Thursday. So, I mean, I can bring it up to them again, but no, no, I no, think no. that's where, you know, it got left. We'll yeah. just... Do what you guys, it's not a yeah. big deal. We can do it at the end. I'm just trying to think. I, I know how particular you are with how we do things, and, and we are, too, as to where everything is shown, and our community has kind of come to expect certain things to be certain places. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I don't know. Does it seem odd to put it under presentations um, with a note that says at end of the meeting? Does that sound odd? Does that... You're the you're the guru over there. So, or are you okay with? I'm fine. I can just put the, uh, some. Or do you or do you think it should be at the end? Um, I don't care. Never mind. I don't even need to get involved in that. That's just beyond my scope. Just make sure it's on there somewhere. But you want it on Tuesday. Mm -hmm. On Tuesday at the end yeah. of the commission meeting once it's adjourned. Is that correct? Am I yes. understanding correctly? Yes. Yeah, so we should just make sure we have our flag of it, you know, ready and the guys. But I thought you were going to make a problem. No, they're doing that on Thursday. We're doing that on Thursday because we specifically want it on Thursday night. Because it's in the evening. Otherwise, it was going to be together, watching. but that's uh, the reason. And so we're just, you're just, we're just going to go and raise the flag. And so I'll put a note actually at the adjourn meeting, and then I'm going to put raise the flag. Right. So that I'm going to make a note in there. I have to assume that we're going to want to make a couple comments about it or no. I mean... Well, last year we didn't. I mean, we made we comments at the Thursday meeting at the proclamation. So gotcha. Okay. That's what we did. So. All right. Well, I mean, we'll do whatever mm -hmm. we'll do whatever we did before. If you're I'll, okay, I'll with the committee is okay. Sure, like You'll let us know. Yeah, but that was assuming that Antonella will be there Tuesday yes. for pictures and social media. Yes. So residents will know. Yeah. Yes. Right, and that's, that's exactly what we did last time. It was, and it was kind of cool. Mm -hmm. Right. So okay. You're good. I got it. I'm going to put and it in And do we need to do another motion about our agenda? No. No. I'm just going to put a note as it. At, it's at, just a note. On the Jordan. Because it's section. not a, officially part of our meeting. Okay. Gotcha. All right. Well, we got that all worked through. Thank you. And, again, thank you, um, Commissioner, for all your hard work on the committee. We'll talk well, about well, that later, you. but well, appreciate thank you that. Thank for being and such a staunch advocate and moving. We'll look forward to on. hearing all about it. Um, all right. Yes, you will hear about it during my comments, which leave a little time because there's a long list of activities. Today? Well, yeah. At, during my, our liaison. Oh. I, I'm allowed to do that. Oh, right? yes, you are. Yeah, I mean, I'm not going to go into her okay. details. All right, because we do have, don't forget, you. I mentioned we do have two no, other I'm commission discussion items. All right, all right, I'm just making sure scared. I know what we're doing because I definitely don't want to rush through this. Mm -hmm. We have our 2022 <laughs> Citizens' Opinion <laughs> Survey <laughs> Feedback presentation again for anybody watching I just want to say that this is this is just the first overview right we don't have an action plan yet yeah, right. it's just an overview for us to have collective dialogue um, and for our team to hear what our collective dialogue <clears throat> is so they can go create something that comes back to us so this is just step one
and I would like to turn it over to Jennifer, who I know has shepherded this and brought this idea to us when, when she came to us. It's something her other cities did. So, again, another wonderful thing you brought to our city thank for you, communications. So thank you very much. Thank you very much, given, Mayor. Given I'm just sucking up. Today. Mayor's got the floor all morning. It's, it's that's fine. Well, but, you know, no, 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 when you're proud awesome. of something and proud of something that somebody's done, you should mm -hmm. speak that. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mayor. Good morning. You're welcome. I appreciate your comments. To be sure, uh, Vice Mayor Commissioners, the uh, Citizen Opinion Survey is the bedrock of our budget. Through that survey, we are able to ensure that we are allocating our resources in, in our fiscal year budget uh, properly, according to what it is your citizens and your business owners want. Traditionally, you would do uh, the Citizen Survey one year, then the Business Survey the next year, then the Citizen Survey to see um, how we did and whether or not our allocation is still the way that your citizens and your residents want to see it. The, um, we did not, we did the last survey in 2019 uh, and we, uh, and then we did the business survey. We did not, we should technically have done it in 2021, right? The, the next well, resident survey. Every three years. Every, I'm sorry, I don't mean, right. Yeah, every, every other year was, was the goal. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah, no, I thought it was every three So, okay. but you kind of alternate the, yep, between yep, the two of them. Yep. That said, though, we didn't do it last year just simply because COVID. of the COVID, right? Yeah. It, it just wasn't the time to ask our residents these questions. Right. Um, right. And so, <laughs> yeah, at our first available opportunity, then we put out the survey. And, and I will say that, uh, and I was talking to Ann ahead of time, um, and I was talking actually to a colleague of mine who's in administration in the county, uh, and we were talking about citizen surveys, and this particular colleague had said there's no way they're sending out their survey this year, <laughs> just after COVID. Yeah. Uh, and it's the divisiveness, I think, in, you know, in, in the community, our community, local, state, federal, uh, and, and that type of a thing. But, and we talked about that amongst ourselves and talked about that um, amongst some of you as well in terms of is this the right time to survey <clears throat> our citizens, and it absolutely is. Because if we're, if we're really mean, if we're really uh, um, uh, desirous, true to the fact that we want to allocate our resources according to our residents, it doesn't matter when we ask them, in my mind. It, right. it needs to be uh, now, most certainly. That said, um, I lost some sleep over this citizen opinion survey. It's a tough time out there. It really is. And um, um, that said, I was actually pleased with the results of our survey given what all of us have been through, our residents and, and our businesses and, and, and ourselves as well, the, the city and, and our employees. Uh, as the mayor had said, today you're going to hear the data all together for the first time. You were provided the, the citizen survey a little bit early. Uh, Thank you, Nicole. It has been online since last Wednesday the, uh, for our residents to read as well. Um, we have, uh, you're going to discuss it amongst yourselves and during our agenda review, I talked to all of you about it. I know that you have concerns and areas that you'd like to focus on a little bit. And then we will put together the action plan just the way we did last time, as far as how we're going to address uh, some of these comments within the survey, if we're able to. Some of them we're, we're just not able to, they're outside of our purview. Um, and so I am very pleased to report, however, that uh, we are, um, obviously the draft budget is, is, the draft business plan is in my hands and will be in yours shortly. We're developing the budget right now and we are allocating our resources correctly. So I wanna to cut to the chase there and tell you I'm very pleased to see uh, that fundamentally we're going in the right direction as far as our budget goes. Uh, we have Nicole Delfino who as you know is relatively new to the team. She's working on her master's degree right now and she is, is do, has a class in surveying and stats and she's, she's doing a super job. In fact, during our one-on-one -on -one, she talks about it for about 45 minutes. Oh dear God. <laughs> I take a little nap with my eyes open, but I'm just kidding, Nicole. You brought back my algebra classes when I saw the, you know, the I'm just kidding. She, does. she loves data. It makes her very excited. And then we have Ann Wittin. Is, is it Wittin or Wittin? Wittin. Wittin. Uh, she's back with us. And I know that you, during a presentation in 2019, you thought that it was a very good presentation, which is why we really wanted to work with Ann again uh, as far as, as the documentation. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to our experts. Before you start, the one thing I wanted to just tell people, you know, if they're watching this and interested in the data, the thing I was, and again, not sucking up over here, but the thing I was really impressed by what Jennifer said to me yesterday in our agenda review was, you don't just survey people when you expect to hear only good things, mm. which is kind of what right. you were saying, but when you said it that way, absolutely correct, right. and, and that made me even a little bit more proud mm -hmm. of how we were handling it versus the colleague you mentioned. Right. So, yes. Thank you, ma'am. 
Okay, Nicole, turn it over to you. It's still morning. Good morning, Mayor and Commissioners. Um, we're here to present the um, information and feedback from the citizen survey. Uh, just to briefly, I changed the slide, but the slide did not change up there. <laughs> Justin. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't see you there, sitting there, Sue. Yeah. There you go. There we go. Okay. Sorry about that. Um, just to briefly kind of go over, uh, there was some discussion when we presented um, getting this kicked off about some terminology. So I wanted to go over that quickly, um, what our survey stats for 20, this survey 2022 looked like. Um, and we'll then give the survey findings and we'll talk a briefly about next steps. Um, can I just ask a quick question just for the benefit of all of us to make sure this flows well? Um, I'm trying to figure out at what point, I don't, I don't want us to go, I want everybody to be able to ask their questions, but I also don't want us interjecting in the middle of a discussion. So how would you feel it would be best? Do you want us to wait till the end? Or do you want us to do it sort of maybe by section? So I'm actually going to take the first section um, on the terminology and some of the demographic data. Okay, and so then we can if you wanted to there. ask questions there, um, and then Anne's going to do the findings, um, and she'll go into you know more detail than what you see on someone on your slides or are generalized. Um, so if you want to ask questions, either uh, we have it broken up kind of by department in some areas. Okay. So if you wanted to pause, let's do do it that way. Then maybe by the department if that's how you have it broken up. Okay. Is that okay with you, Jennifer? Sure. Okay. I just want to make sure we're all on the same page. Thank you. Sure. So I just wanted to briefly uh, share some kind of definitions in the statistical world um, that Anne uh, lives in and I partially live in with uh, my program. Um, but in regards to this survey, um, these, you know, these terminology, these, these terms, they may mean different things um, in a statistical world, but uh, you know, versus real world. Um, so the first one is validity, uh, and this relates to accuracy. So it's asking, <coughs> are we asking the right questions and are we measuring what's important? Um, and I think for this survey, um, we can certainly check that box um, that we are asking the right questions and measuring what's important to our uh, residents. Um, as far as reliability goes, uh, it's relating to consistency. So are we, being, are we able to compare year over year responses? Um, are we being consistent with our questions? And then are we asking the right people? Um, so we, you know, this being the second year of the Citizens Opinion Survey, uh, we were very diligent in keeping the questions as similar as possible because one word or comma or whatever can change how somebody interprets a question. So we wanted to make sure that those stayed very consistent um, and now that we have the second year, we're able to compare those responses year over year. Um, and are we asking the right people? Obviously, we're asking our residents, uh, so we are asking the right people. Um, we'll dig a little bit into the demographics to see you know, where there may be areas that we can improve in um, uh, as far as reaching um, different populations. So, you know, we hear this, this terminology statistically sound, um, and it is different from a, a term we'll look at a little bit later, which is statistically significant. Um, but when you talk about something that's statistically sound, it is relating to the sample size of your survey. So it is a very rigorous <laughs> equation that, yes, I had to actually do that equation. Um, now they have websites you just punch things in. Yeah, don't uh, you have a calculator for that? Yes, it is. A sample survey calculator. It is online. Um, but it, you, you take what your population is. Um, and then you get what your, your required sample size will be. Um, and then this, is, this then validates, are your responses reflective of the population? Um, as far as a social survey such as this, there's a confidence in data level that's standard as well as a uh, margin of error. So, sorry. So I wanted to show you a side-by-side -side comparison between what is expected or what would be required to meet those uh, confidence levels and margin of error with a sample size that we would need for our population of about 36,000 people is 381 responses. We received 
1,715 responses. <laughs> so that helps improve um, our margin of error. Um, it reduces it by half of what is usually the standard. So, and I think you wanted to add. Yes, so that 2.4% plus or minus standard error is actually the worst case scenario for the survey. And the worst case scenario is, is a topic that citizens' opinions are 50-50. So to put it in terms of elections, for instance, if you were in an election runoff um, and, and half the people were going to vote for you and half the people were going to vote for your opponent, you would need a larger survey to accurately predict what the outcome of that election was going to be. If it was an overwhelming landslide for one candidate over another, you could survey a whole lot fewer people um, and, and know how that, that election was going to come out. So if, for instance, we look at something like the 93.6% of citizen of Dunedin citizens who say that they are satisfied with city services, the standard error for that statistic is only 1.2% because of the consensus of opinion. Okay, so that 2.4% is a great number and it is the worst case scenario. For many of your statistics, the standard error is actually much lower. Okay. So we're going to start you know, digging into are we asking the right people a little bit more um, and looking at demographics. Um, this first chart is demographics um, by gender and then by age. So what we've provided here is a comparison to the census data. So in blue is our census population um, of males and females, and then red is the 2022 survey data of, re of respondents by gender. So as you can see, we had a few more females respond than males, um, which is pretty typical of a survey, particularly one like this. Um, so uh, we do know that, you know, again, I feel like every time we have the opportunity to collect data on this level and to analyze it, we can then work on ways to improve the next time. Um, so I, I take this as, you know, this is great information. Um, we've really kind of dissected it, I think, even more than we did the last time um, to take a look at, you know, what we need to do moving forward. Um, and then on the other chart, you're looking at respondents by ages. Um, this is kind of a broader uh, grouping of ages. So I want to move on to the next chart, which breaks down <laughs> the uh, age, uh, ages um, kind of uh, based on the, the census categorization. So what we have um, here is the census data in blue, the 2019 data in red, and then the 2022 data in orange. So we can see that in some categories, we're, we're definitely exceeding our population um, as far as respondents go, particularly in the 55 to 64 and then the 65 to 74 year old range. However, even within that 55 to 64 year, year range, we reduced from the last time. So we actually are trying to get you know, more aligned with the census data in that category. Uh, what we saw, where we saw a few improve, additional improve, improvements are the 45 to 54 year range and then the 75 years and older. So those groups are both aligning more with the actual um, census data. So I just wanted to call attention, again, I kind of spoke a little bit to those two age groups, the 55 to 74 year um, groups. We know <laughs> that this is a typical response for this kind of survey. These are the folks, they have the time, um, they have the access, they're the ones that are gonna respond. Um, as far as the younger groups, um, the under 34 year range, I feel like we do have some work to do in that area. Um, and what I talked with Anne and even <clears throat> mentioned to Jennifer um, is what I'd like to, well, first, first to state that we speculate that this group is not responding because, you know, they're, I don't even know, I don't think they're even called millennials. They're younger than millennials. They want fast, rapid. They don't want to spend 30 minutes on a survey uh, and, you know, going through a lot of information. So what we'd like to do is actually kind of craft a spot survey for this age group, um, which really focuses on very um, strategic questions from the survey 
um, and then kind of analyze, are they aligning with you know, the overall trend in the group? Um, so that's something that we do want, that I know it's not, we weren't talking action plans, but um, wanted to make sure that, that we address that up front. And real quickly, before we leave that slide, for this year's research, we purchased an additional 7,501 random resident emails to make sure that we were getting a good representation and not just talking to the same people that we talked to last time. Of those, 1,114 were between the ages of 20 to 34. Um, so we, we already knew this was an issue. Um, of those 1,000, only 21 responded, um, which was a 1.9% response rate, where of the rest of that new sample, we had a 5.7% response rate. So it's not that we didn't give that sample an opportunity to respond. I think that the length of the survey works against getting response from that particular age group. All right, and then we will shift to democracy. Yeah, until after they finish the whole democratic. I've got, I've got, I've got, sorry, I've got just, yeah, couple, two, a couple more. <laughs> and then we'll go to that. So I separated the, the white and the minority respondents because the scale would just be nearly impossible to, to read. Um, as far as white respondents, what you see on your screen, you have census data, 2019 data, and then 2022 data. Um, you can see that we have some, some work to do to align with the census data, but we did decrease uh, white respondents, which is good news because that then means we actually increased our minority respondents. Um, and I, I do wanna overall, I'm, I'm very pleased with the work that we did here. Um, we increased our participation with minority respondents in every category. Um, and then in three categories, the American Indian or Alaskan Native, the Native Hawaiian or Pacific Islander, and the two or more races, we are meeting or exceeding our census data. Um, where we see, obviously, that we need work, although we saw an improvement, are with African American and Asian populations. Um, I, I know we didn't talk about this, but there, I, I may speculate that there could, I don't know if there's any language barriers with, the, with an Asian population that we might want to take a look at. But um, again, we also know that minority, uh, particularly minority male, young males, are the most difficult population to reach in a survey like this. That's kind of standard across the board. Um, so this gives us, again, another opportunity to uh, take a look at ways to improve. Um, we did do a lot more marketing uh, this year uh, as far as putting flyers in the community centers, um, giving the information to our public schools, um, handing flyers out at our spring break camp at the MLK Center, so really trying to find ways to, to reach and interact with those populations. And oh, before we sorry. leave that question, <laughs> I just wanted to say that we got much more feedback this time um, that the question, just the fact that we're asking about people's my, uh, um, racial affiliation um, <clears throat> was offensive to a component of the resident base. We, we got uh, less response to this question and more people commenting that they were annoyed that they were even asked. So going back to your division comment, um, what I picked up from people's comments about this is that they thought that you were asking in order to exclude people as opposed to make sure that everyone was included. So this question created some friction. So, and then lastly, just wanted to address, but what about the terminology <coughs> statistically significant. Um, this term in particular, um, it means different things for statistics versus for the regular general population. In a regular population, you, you use this terminology is used a lot um, to mean important. But really, in statistics, um, it is about a relationship. And it, it's, a again, a massively uh, complex equation that tests variables either over time or as a relationship to each other. Um, and I, I my professor would kill me using proves because we don't ever prove anything. We actually disprove something 
it's in quotes, but to prove that the results that you're seeing are not due to chance, but that there is an actual relationship. So while there wasn't a lot of testing um, in this <clears throat> survey, per, you know, it, precisely, I'll let Ann speak to the testing that she did do. So, and, and you'll see some of it in the report. I've tested a few additional things that I'll mention as we go through. But what I looked at was whether or not what we found in 2019 and what we found this year, whether the differences between those numbers through these scientific tests is actually statistically significant, meaning that that is a real change as opposed to just the vagaries of, of who answered or you know, just a random chance. Um, so, so some of that is, is pulled out in the report for you and some of it I'll mention as we go through. So um, just this is a this is my kind of stopping point here um, okay. before turning it over. I, this is uh, just a recap of you know again using the same kind of questions, um, you know including the demographic, the term that the survey ran, um, and then the increases to how we attempted to reach people um, through you know QR codes and social media postings and things like that. Okay. Any questions or comments on the statistics? I, Go ahead. Oh, thank you, Mel. It's, thank you, Mel. I'll be quick. Oh, no, you're, you're okay. um, Just, and I might be reading it wrong, but in the minority section, I didn't see a Hispanic category or, do you know, where those... We asked minority? the Hispanic questions separately, um, as the census does, because many people identify as, for instance... African American and Hispanic, or Caucasian and Hispanic. So we ask it as a separate question. We can. Uh, we did not look at it in detail. We can look at it um, and bring that data back to you. And so, why I guess as part of the histor the Hispanic population, part of the minority, why weren't they included? In it's it's a it's. <laughs> there's a whole. I don't want to misspeak so maybe you, you might be better but it's actually it's it's not a race is that group? right it's not a it's, race it's an ethnic group and it's, not a, a race. it's an ethnic group and so while we do ask so there's a lot of a lot of individuals who can be white hispanic or hispanic white um so it, it is it, and because i honestly i questioned ann when it when we were drafting the survey for the same purpose because i know we have a large hispanic population right. and that was particularly why i wanted to reach out to dunedin highland middle and dunedin middle to make sure we were capturing you know that group and that feedback so what we yeah. we can take a look at the respondents and that rate and get that back to you um but as a as a race category um, the census doesn't include it, right? And so we kind of were so, following. So we made sure we aligned with how the census asks that, right? Yeah, and, and just because the label on this is minority, so when we talk about minorities, we don't necessarily specifically identify them by ethnicity or race. We just talk about minority, right? And so when you use a label like that, that leads to questions: Why were they excluded? Uh, which brings me to the next topic on <clears throat> the um, the friction and um, where where was that friction seen in 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 this question? Was that more on the minority side of being concerned about why you're asking that, or was it more on the White or you you don't know. I have no way of answering the question because they they chose not to. They chose not to answer. Right. Okay. Yeah. That that makes sense. Okay. That, that's all that I had. Thank you. Any questions or comments? Yes, sir. So two questions I've asked this before, but I'm just going to ask it because I didn't hear you say anything about it. How do we make sure we don't have duplicates? So I spent over six hours going through this data, and we definitely had duplicates. So we looked at the volunteer names, addresses, phone numbers, all of those things. We, lo we looked at those. But we also looked at um, sort of unique comments, like, um, as an example, people saying that the golf course needed to be restored to um, Mr. Ross's standards, you know, so something very, very specific. I looked at everybody who said that, 
to make sure that they had different age groups, you know, some were men, some were women, that kind of thing, that we didn't have somebody who was trying to stack the ballot with a, a particular. So I even went through comments like that. Um, another instance, also <coughs> golf-related, strangely, was a par three golf course. And that seemed so very specific that I looked at everybody who said that to see whether or not it looked like those were the same people, and it did not. So we, we put a lot of effort into making sure that this was unduplicated. That's awesome. And, and on that note, when we look at the comment section, and like sometimes I'll be like, you know, golf course, golf course, golf course, golf course, which I know because you did alphabetical kind of thing. Mm -hmm. but, but when you pulled out people's comments, like if somebody <clears throat> had like five statements about the golf course in that one comment, you, you kept it as one comment, right? Yes. It wasn't five separate Each comments. person's individual <clears throat> comment is one specific gotcha. bullet. Now, you may see, and I, I'm sure you, like I, can read that it's because of people's unique perceptions that it's the same person answering the same thing to multiple comments, mm -hmm. multiple sure. questions. There is some of that, that right. going on. Yeah, that's true. I wasn't um, even thinking about but that. But within a single question, mm -hmm. everything that one person said is together as one comment. Okay. Okay. And then my last question was, so... Like for the ages, say, 25 to 34, are you able to like pull them out separate and say, this is what they said, even though it's a small sample because of? And, and we did that to, to some extent. Um, everything that we tabulated, we looked at different constituencies to see whether they were different. And we looked at that for age group, and we looked at it for um, the surveys that came back through the blast email versus the surveys that came back through city channels. I'll even, I'll talk about that a little bit as we get into findings. You know, so we looked at that and to the extent that we saw significant differences, we included it in, in the report. You know, wow. if, if we saw that, that for some reason different groups were responding differently. Great. And you're, you're awesome. And now we got a master's student in this, so this is great. Thank you. Yeah, I, I had two questions. I'll ask my second one because it's along the, the, the alignment here. Um, so we can, any one of these broken out groups, for example, in this, in eth uh, ethnicity, we could go and cross out and go continue right on through and see what they thought of the whole study by a selected group. We could. We could. That is outside the scope of our, you know, so there might be some additional professional time charges to do that, but we could absolutely do it. I was just asking, so I see the flexibility sure. within, within yes. the program, yes. which is sort of yeah. in common. Uh, and there might be some sample size caveats, but, <coughs> but yes, we definitely have the ability to do that. Um, the, uh, coming back to the, 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 the entire study, um, I, I still have a question uh, and I'll ask the question, then I'll have to tell you why I'm asking the question. And, and some, at one point in time, you said you said that you were trying to get a, an alignment with consens with the, with the uh, consensus data. Um, and so, one of the things that that I continue uh, that it's trying me off, off often is is the lack of, uh, of ra randomly being selected. To complete this this uh, um, survey, so for example, I did it. Say I did it two years ago, three years ago, whatever. And now I know it's going to come out again, and so now I'm going to do it again. Okay, and so we may have had, I don't know, I, I shouldn't. I'll just make this up. This is being made up now for everybody. So I could have half the people that that could have done this second time could have done it the first time without being asked. They just knew it was there, and they came out looking for it because that's who they are. They're that group that does that. They answer these things. Mm -hmm. And then you have a great group of people that are outside of that that don't answer these things. And so they're not randomly being selected. And so I, I just want to, that's what's trying me all the time when I, when I, when I look at this, particularly Particularly when we say this is what we're following. This is this is how we dance. Now, I, I say that in relationship to the five of us here, 
because we obviously then we're out we're out into into our environment and into the constituents and when we talk to the constituents um, this weekend I talked to a, a, a certain group and I had told them that the study was going to exist and I don't think any of them did the study um, so I said we well, need to come and see what the study is going to tell you that, <clears throat> that you might have thought well, and that, um, so that was our purpose in purchasing the additional 7,500 emails, was to make sure that we were reaching more people. We certainly got feedback in the study from people who said, I am so glad you asked me. I've never been asked for my opinion before. Um, but you're right. There is non-response bias um, that every market research study everywhere fights against, and the people who answer surveys tend to be the people who are either really happy or really unhappy, but the entire point in, our, in, in using us and not just going through your channels is because we brought to the table this random database that wasn't just the people who talked to you all the time, and we, oh, we over doubled that for this particular research and wound up finding that we got very similar answers to 2019 for many, many things. That replication, knowing that we are at least in part talking to different people, and we are, um, means that you are finding something that you can actually work with. Can, can I tag on? Mm -hmm. Do you mind? Just please, a, a please, comment? please. I mean, and I don't know how this is factored, but I'm thinking of this as, as the commissioner is saying that, but like, to me, the more we're consistent with doing these, the more people are going to be like, ding, hey, they're listening, mm -hmm. they're acting on based on what we say. The more, what, don't you think? I mean, people are going to be like, hey, I'm not missing this next time because, you know, they're listening. I mean, it, how much does that play? I, I think that that does play. I think that what we found in 2019 and what we found now is you have a phenomenally involved citizen base. Yeah. I mean, I, very remarkably so. And, and so, yes, I, and one of the things we're hearing this year, and I was going to talk about it a little bit, is that there is a component of that base who feels like your focus is less on residents and more on developers and businesses. Mm -hmm. You know, so the more that people think that you are actually listening to them, yes, I think you will get more buy-in to, to providing feedback. Thank you, Jen. Oh, thank you. Me. Okay. A huge percentage, um, so, so almost a quarter of the people who responded to this year's survey came out of those new emails. Um, Would you say that again? I'm sorry, just didn't oh, hear. So I, uh, just I'm didn't do, hear. I'm, do, I'm doing the math in my head, but I think it's about a quarter of the responses to this year's survey came out of those new random emails. Mm -hmm. So. Anything else, John? Thank you. Okay. All right, on to the next. All right, here you go, Ann. Okay, <laughs> all me. Um, all right, so the, one of the very first questions that we ask is how people rate Dunedin as a place to live, to raise children, to work, to retire, so as a city that respects diversity. So even after everything that we've been through since 2019, you see that the responses are very, very close. That increase in the percentage of people who rate Dunedin um, as a great place to work is actually statistically significant. So that, that growth is um, real and part of the economic development efforts that, that, um, that go on. Um, this year, we are seeing 93.6%. That's the number I mentioned earlier that I said had the lower standard of error. 93.6% um, saying that they are satisfied with city services. That is slightly down from 2019, um, which was 95.6%. That difference is also significantly um, significant, statistically significant. Um, in terms of public safety, uh, this is a very much on par with what we saw in 2019. In 2019, that was 96.2%. Uh, um, 
And Nicole's done a great job of kind of pulling things together from different parts of the survey that, that, um, that align into, into city um, departments. But um, over, we saw kind of across the board that, that these numbers were very consistent with last year and that satisfaction levels were very, very high. Um, in terms of areas of concern, they're talking about Pinellas Trail. That appears a ton throughout the comments. Um, when they're talking about trail safety, they're talking about crossings, particularly Skinner. They're talking about, um, and this seems new to me, there's a lot more talk about e-bikes and e-skateboards. Yeah, we've been hearing it. Particularly on the trail, and, and that that is causing some safety issues. Um, there's a lot of talk about bikes not following the rules on the trail. Um, pedestrian safety, um, traffic and vehicular safety, bicycle safety, um, road crossings and speeding. There was a lot of talk about speeding, particularly in the neighborhoods. So I just wanna quickly interject, You know, we ran this survey in February. Um, and into March, so I, I personally am very, you know, excited to look at, you know, when we do it again, you know, what kind of, the improvements that we're going to see, is, you know, particularly with the Pinellas Trail safety, um, with you know some of the actions that we've taken as far as getting that stoplight in place and then addressing Skinner Boulevard. I was thinking that actually as I was sitting and listening to the meeting before I you know, before we came on, is how many of the things that I read in the comments you guys are talking about um, or are already in the process of addressing. It was really exciting. So in terms of public works, um, in 2019, that was 90.8%. We're now at 90.1% who are satisfied with public works um, activities. Um, we actually saw improvements in, I believe, all of um, the, the, the um, comparable year-over-year -year questions in terms of people being more satisfied with conditions of major roads, more satisfied with the conditions of their neighborhood roads. In fact, in the comments, we had some people thank you for things that you had done. Um, relatively recently. Um, so more satisfied with solid waste and recycling. So improvements in all those areas. Drainage and drinking water quality are two questions that we added this year. So those will be things that you'll be able to track moving forward. Yeah, and as you're, as you're comparing this presentation to the report, for instance, um, we did aggregate uh, you know, data on solid waste and recycling as an entire division, but it's broken down in the report by you know, recycling, debris pickup, trash pickup, and across every category in solid waste and recycling, they increase their satisfaction. So I was very proud of them. The aggregate... The aggregate um, the, the comparable aggregate statistic from 2019 was 94.8 versus 96. So, okay. Um, if you guys remember when I sat here in 2019 and told you about the, the comment sections and then it was traffic, traffic, and more traffic, um, traffic's still a concern and definitely is mentioned. Um, overbuilding has overshadowed it um, in the open ends to this survey. So in this section where we asked people if they had any input, there are some very specific comments about, you know, we need better drainage on my street or we need a speed bump or, you know, lights are bad, you know, and, and some of them are very, very specific. There is um, more general concerns about overbuilding and traffic concerns, and overbuilding um, is is winning out, I think, over traffic. Not that they're not still concerned about it, but but because they are. Um, and when it comes to overbuilding this time, as compared to last time, um, they're not just talking about new multifamily development. They're talking about redevelopment in neighborhoods and redevelopment with. Um, houses that don't necessarily match the character of what's around them or totally fill up lots. That's so there's a lot of those kinds of comments. 
Um, there are some new trends in terms of things that, that, that I'm seeing talked about more, like pickleball um, and, and the e-bikes and skateboards that I mentioned earlier. Um, there is more concern than I heard in 2019 about water quality. Um, there is more concern than I heard in 2019 about underground utilities. There is more concern than I heard in 2019 about the aging of the, the water and sewer infrastructure. Um, there was a ton of resistance to the idea of a downtown hotel. Um, maintenance and policing of causeway beaches seemed to be much more talked about now than it was back in 2019. Um, and interestingly, with the presentation you had earlier about the interlocal agreement, I saw more people talking about their concerns about um, pesticides and fertilizers being used on city lands um, and runoff into the sound, more concern about water quality in the sound. So those things are on residents' minds as well. So. Parks, um, the 96.2% is actually up. The thing that was um, most exciting to me is we saw um, the community center and the library, which isn't actually included on this slide and I know is a separate department, but, but we saw those two categories have really high satisfaction ratings, but lower satisfaction among your younger residents and among minority residents last time. This time, and I know there are small segments, this time in terms of the community center, younger residents went from a 50% satisfaction in 2019 to a 92% satisfaction in 2022. And minorities went from 48.9 to 91. So where I would mentioned, you know, people are really happy with this department, but you may have some underserved communities. It seems like efforts have really been made to address those. And like I said, I know the library is not up there, but I wanted to say it as well. The younger resident population went from 62.5% satisfaction to 92.1. And minorities went from 57.1 to 97.1. Um, and so we, we saw um, very similar satisfaction levels. Sterling Park driving range is new. We added it this time. Also, Highlander Pool and the Spray Park got split. So you'll see in the report, we don't, even though we asked about it last time, we asked about them in aggregate. So they got split out this time around. Um, and continuing with that, um, I wanted to talk a little bit about city events. And um, in terms of the very satisfied scores, there is a significant decrease. Um, when we aggregate it with satisfied, um, it goes from 95.5 to 94.6. So people still love them. Um, but in 2019, it seemed like the majority of responses said that that was one of the things that made the city very special. Sorry, can you just say that whole thing again? But, <laughs> certainly, city events. Um, so gotcha. city events. In, in, in aggregate, right. um, it's going from 95.5% satisfaction in 2019 to 94.6% satisfaction here, which wouldn't fall into being statistically significant. But if I look at the very satisfied component, there is an almost 10 point drop in people saying that they are very satisfied with city events. And in looking at the comments, last time, um, it seemed that the majority of people commenting about events were saying it was one of the things that made the city really special. This time, um, it seems like our comments more trend to it's really hard for residents to get there. Parking is really an issue that it's drawing in outsiders who are just creating traffic and congestion mm -hmm. and complaints about noise. So um, although there are still people who say that they love it and think that that's part of why they came here, um, 
they seem to be causing some problems. And I know in talking with Nicole earlier that that's something that you guys are thinking about and addressing. Um, and the more that you can let residents know that you're hearing hearing that and, and trying to, to deal with that, I think um, the, the better that that will wind up being. I just, I saw some confused looks. So I just wanted to clarify when we're looking at the, this chart in particular, this is a combination of the respondents who, re, who replied with very satisfied or satisfied. Yes. So in your, in the report that's posted for the public and that you have, there is a breakdown for every selection that can be made. So I just wanted to. I yes. Was, yeah. So in the report, we give you both the very satisfied and the combined. Can I have a question? Is this the right question? Shoot. Sure. <laughs> okay. You know, I tended to look at the very satisfied. And because in some cases, and I would say police, there seems to be something going on with uh, recognition of police, the PCO, something might be we can do better. But they're very, oh, shoot. they're very satisfied was like 32%. Well, it pulled them up to 80-something because satisfied was 50-something. So is that how you always do it? I mean, the very satisfied and satisfied, which sort of is like, oh, it's okay. I mean, to me, it's more important statistically to look at that top number. Well, we, we give you both, and that's, why, you and that's why we give you both. But the, com the combined satisfaction is important, not just in this survey, but in, in everything that we're doing. We're finding that there's more angst, maybe, is, mm -hmm. is the best mm -hmm. word. Mm -hmm. So it does not surprise me that you're seeing some shift between very satisfied and satisfied. In terms of the comments, and specifically in terms of police, um, we did, the, the, there were some comments and probably a few more than we saw back in 2019 about over-policing or speed traps or um, maybe the sheriff's department being rude. Um, and as we saw in 2019, a few people saying they wished you had your own police department again, you know, in, in terms of that specific. Mm -hmm. Well, and, you know, uh, on the events, I mean, it, it has occurred to me that some of the statistically things that we saw said, you know, planning for the future uh, that we need to really be thinking about. However, I mean, in true, and I don't mean to be defensive, but for two years we were totally in reactive mode with something that hadn't happened in 100 years. And, you know, we got through it. We thought we were through it. Then it started up again. You know, I mean, so this is a very unusual time. Even with your events, uh, people are still afraid sometimes yeah. to come down to large events. It could be just <clears throat> not the parking, but just the, you know, mm -hmm. the, the, the huge amounts of people. We, we um, heard that in the comments. Right. So, um, I mean, it's an unusual time. I do agree, though, with Jennifer that, you know, you don't ask just when you think you're going to get right. the kudos. You ask at very difficult times so you, it, you can hear the angst. It's okay. Yeah. It's okay to be upset. And it's okay for us to, to and, hear those comments and to deal with them in a rational, objective manner. And frankly, they want you to hear their mm -hmm. frustration. Uh -huh. um, I will also say, speaking of doing this during a difficult time, um, there is a fair amount of pushback against visitors coming into the area and the traffic that they cause. Um, and I, I did a little bit of, of looking at some secondary statistics in terms of Pinellas County's resort tax collections because we do a uh, research data as a company does a ton of tourism research. So this is something we've been following kind of all the way through. But countywide, February and March 2022, resort tax collections were up by 43.9% over last year. Now, that's resort tax collections, so that's not just 
there were 43% more visitors. It also involves I have um, that answer. Rate. It's 15.5 um, million visitors we have on average. It is down a little bit, but it's actually comparable with 2019. Yes. Um, in addition, that's to our that's annually. 90 some percent, and I don't have the spreadsheet in front of me. Rent a car or come by car. So when you yeah, do the average cool. number of part in, in a party. What do we say? Five and a half million extra cars? I can't remember the number, but mm -hmm. if you do the math, that sounds about right. Extra cars every year when we only have a million people living here. So that's probably six or seven hundred thousand cars that are actually here that live here. So yeah, it's so not so, the development causing the traffic. So that that resort tax number, as I said, is up 44 percent over last year up 79% over 2020, which of course had March shut down in the middle, and up 40%, 41% over 2019. So this, because of the pent up demand of people not being able to travel, and this is not Pinellas County specific, um, there has been a huge surge in visitation. And we surveyed right in the middle of the biggest you know, at the height of season. So I think some of the angst comes from that. But I also looked at what proportion of those resort tax collections are generated in Dunedin. And so for all of 2021, it's 1.2% of the resort tax collections come from here. So going back to things you might want to communicate to residents, if I, if I, apply some numbers to that to turn it into people, um, just kind of as a fingertip calculation. It winds up being about 62,000 visitors who are staying overnight in Dunedin, that it's Dunedin properties paying, which sounds like a lot, but if I multiply that by length of stay and, and divide it, you're only talking about an average of 800 people per day, you know, who are staying in Dunedin. So they're staying, not yes, but yeah, visiting Right, exactly. So they're a, not necessarily yes. the the so when people are, are very resistant to the idea of you're gonna put in a new hotel and it's gonna right. you know bring so many additional people, you know, they're not necessarily the biggest part of the problem either. Right. What um, we have is about five point five percent of the overall number of visitors in a year. So it's it, not people necessarily staying. A lot of day trippers, which is about 800,000 people. And that, that overall out. number that you were saying does include day trippers. Yes. Um, but probably does not include day trippers who are people like me, who live in St. Petersburg, but come up here to go to Flanagan's, you know, right. that, that kind of thing. Um, you know, they're not the counted. for Flanagan's there? Mm. Like that. <laughs> they're not counted in that Pinellas County number um, that, that you're getting from them. And while we're talking about tourism, they can give you a lot of tools to help communicate to your residents some of the value that visitors bring to the area. Um, so they, they have a lot of that kind of thing available. All right, so um, in terms of allocation of, park, of resources for Parks and Rec, pickleball is new. I was shocked that 31% of the people want pickleball courts, but they do. We're and not. some of them are tennis yeah. players who'd like you to get their lines off of their yeah. courts. Yeah. <laughs> we know. It's like she was in a commission meeting. Yeah, right. <laughs> um, and I, I do, I do kind of just want to draw attention to, to some of those allocation of resources and how they align with the previous slide where we saw the low satisfaction, obviously, with the pool and with the, you know, the dog park, you know, to say, you know, we want a replacement pull additional dog park so it really you know as far as the alignment goes it's incredible actually what we have in the business plan now vis-a-vis -vis and what, what you've done in the last six months it really is and letting them know that you have those things in the works might mm -hmm. cut down on some of the angst mm -hmm. maybe you know yeah. that they know that you heard them so get on uh, we so. we had a meeting yesterday actually Sue and we were uh, brainstorming a lot of different topics and a lot of them are exactly <clears throat> what we're talking here you know how taxes are influencing traffic and parking and how people pay less but you know the whole the how they're all kind of combined so yes Sue's on it part of the action plan <laughs> so the blue bar 
is the people who ranked this particular category as one of the top four things to which they think you should be allocating resources. So these are the top five things that citizens say you should be allocating resources to. That's the blue bar. The red line is the, the satisfaction rating from what we were, you know, the kinds of things we've just been talking about. Generally, we see a pretty inverse relationship. So as an example, a thing that is not here is the library. Only 5.3% of citizens said you should be allocating resources to the library because it has a combined 98.7% satisfaction rating. It's great. They don't think that you need to be allocating a lot of attention to it. That's generally how we see it, see it go. And if things are, are, they think are more of an issue, so satisfaction is lower, then, then they, they think that you should be allocating resources. So, and, and we are seeing that. Um, in terms of the categories, there were very few changes in ranking over 2019. Public works and environmental sustainability switched places. And affordable housing leapt into the top five from position nine. From reading the comments, when it comes to affordable housing, citizens aren't necessarily talking about housing for lower income populations. They're talking about middle Workforce. income, um, people are saying my children won't be able to buy a house here, you know, having grown up here. You know, it's that kind of thing. So they're looking at um, the price points, some of them are saying them very specifically, of some of the new development and saying this is out of the league of most Dunedin residents. So I think that that's part of the reason that you see this bump in, in affordable housing. It's a lot more in the comments than it was in 2019. It, it's, it's, a, it's much more on citizens. Um, so changes that would improve the city as a place to live, and we asked this about a big open end, and we gave you responses, so there's a lot of meat there that you can, can wade through. Um, Again, and this repeats um, from infrastructure because many of these changes are infrastructure related, but top of the mind is controlling growth and making the trail safer and addressing parking, parking and traffic issues. Um, affordable housing comes up. Um, I do see a lot more um, division than I remember seeing in 2019 between pickleballers and tennis players, but people who drive golf carts and people who don't, or residents and tourists, not that we're serving tourists, but, or, or even residents and businesses that I don't remember hearing at all before. Um, so there, there is more of that going on. Um, and we already talked about the tourism growth. Um, last time, the responses to the what people love and to this question about what could be improved. Last time I got the sense that um, the residents very much felt like Dunedin is such a, a special, quaint, beautiful place that they absolutely love and they wanted you to protect it. This time I'm hearing more of a sense that maybe it's too late. So, um, as a theme, and, and again, that goes along with the more angst and, and the more frustration, but it, it definitely is showing up in terms of the comments. Um, and I don't wanna take anything away from, I don't think we've gotten to it yet, um, but yeah, it's our next slide. We'll see in the next slide that um, some of the areas where you had signi statistically significant improvements in satisfaction in 2022 compared to 2019, one of those places is communications. And I don't want to take anything away from that improvement. I think what Sue has done has really helped. 
And one of the, the areas that I thought, okay, well maybe because we did our random sample you know, survey from the emails that we've collected and purchased, and many of the surveys were taken through city website and the city newsletter and your communication channels. It was one of those places that I thought, wow, you know, maybe this is being skewed by the people who are answering because they saw it in the newsletter, so they think you're communicating better because of the newsletter. Our random sample survey response was higher. It was 86%. Um, where the people who responded through the city channels were only 82 percent, um, sorry, in terms, of, in terms of that particular question. So I don't want to take anything away from that improvement in communications. But as I have read through the open ends, I saw um, example after example where there are misconceptions that you guys can probably clear up, you know, an example of that. Um, is the Blue Jays and people were complaining about all of the money that, that has gone into funding the improvements made in Blue Jays facilities. Um, but I was reading news articles that say that a lot of that money came from tax, from resort tax dollars, so therefore was paid for by visitors. If there's a way that you can sort of get that talking point out to residents, I can tell from the comments that some of them have not heard the message yet. Um, and also, the Blue Jays put in tremendous money. Like $50 million. $50 million. So. But you have residents saying you took the park away from our kids and we, you know, paid for it with our tax dollars. So, you know, I, I think that that's a message that, uh, and I'm using that as an example, mm -hmm. but I heard a number but of people say. it's a good point. Say, Very good point. That, that that was, so, so I think that there are, are talking points that maybe can be added to your, your communication channels. Um, there are huge, significant numbers of people complaining about population growth. And traffic is an issue. It is crowded. It's hard to get downtown. Those things are real. But a very significant segment of your residents think that that's because of, of new residential development. Mm -hmm. But I look at census data and you've added less than a thousand people in the last 10 years. We did a focus group following this report last time to drill down and really be able to, to hear what residents had to say in a dialogue kind of way. And we, so, so we produced a chart with the census numbers and we took it and we gave it to the focus group and they looked at me like I was lying to them. You know, that it just wasn't true. So um, also part of doing this in January and February is you guys have not only had a, a big tourism season, you've had a huge snowbird season because last year they couldn't come and the year before they had to leave early. Um, you know, so, so I think that that has significantly affected people. And I think there's another real factor there that I don't know, but, but with gas prices, people are taking more staycations. They're looking for beautiful Absolutely. places here in Florida. Or they just don't feel, you know, I, I was masking today because I got over COVID. I, I tested positive four weeks ago because I flew for a work-related trip on the day they dropped the uh, mask ban mm -hmm. and wound up bringing back COVID from, from my, my work trip. So there are still, which was my first time flying since COVID, there are still people who are not comfortable and we see it in our tourism numbers that, you know, destinations, Florida markets are still up. Maybe they're spending the night, maybe they're just coming for the day, um, but you know, it's, it's creating more traffic. Um, and so, so some of those things, the things that you're already doing that, that they're asking you to do, if you can let them know, um, the other big confusion source is them expecting you to be able to control things that you can't control, <laughs> um, you know, because it's a, a county road or it's a, you know, or it's a state park or it's, you know, whatever. Letting them know what 
you have control of and what you don't have control of and how you're advocating for them with those bodies, I think would help a lot to, to let them know that you are looking out for their interests. So um, like I said, I don't want to take anything away from that communications number. That's incredible. But there are still opportunities, I think, to communicate with your residents better that we're seeing in that open end. But you notice that it's not, I, I really wish I'd actually brought the word cloud from last time because last time the word cloud was just traffic, you know, was kind of <laughs> like this big in the middle of the word cloud. So it doesn't look like that. Um, so business opportunities, this goes along with people saying Dunedin's a better place to live. That change is statistically significant, as is public transportation. I don't have an answer, and Nicole, you said that your departments don't really have an answer for why that one's up, except that some residents did mention new initiatives like the Tiki, am I saying the right tiki thing? Tiki rides. Yeah, Tiki <laughs> rides. So some of that actually got mentioned um, as well. I do want to take just a second and say that there were some things that were statistically significantly down, um, and those included utilities, the building division, but hearing your initiatives with um, your new website and online forms, um, based on the comments that I've read, I think that, that that may be something that you see move in the right direction the next time that you do this survey. Um, planning for the future, that was statistically down. I agree with you. You're coming out of a time where planning for the future, who knew what the future was going to look like? Um, traffic was statistically significantly down and affordable housing that we've already talked about. Um, so. And just, I, I, know you, I know you see it on your screen, but as far as where our individuals or where our residents are getting their information from, um, the beacon was rated very highly with the website just a few points behind. Mm -hmm. So I know Sue's going to move that needle even more. Um, and then uh, there's, you know, as far as social media, we broke it down. I, I just listed the top two here, um, but we broke it down by our internal social media, the city's media versus, you know, next door or another you know, external social media. So we wanted to make that distinction. So Sue had some data to go off of too. All right, this was the question we added, um, a Mayor, in response to your comments when we were proposing doing the survey to begin with. So despite everything that I've said about angst and complaints and, and frustrations and all of those things, the, the bottom line here is that they do think that you are doing the same or better. They, they, they realize that these growth challenges are things all of Pinellas County and all of Florida, for that matter, are dealing with, and they do think that you are doing the same or better as all of your neighboring communities, um, and particularly better in terms of preservation of green space and how you're, how you're despite tourism complaints, how you're handling tourism. So in terms of what they like best about Dunedin, we're hearing beauty and green spaces and the vast array of things to do and the small town charm um, with nearby big city amenities and um, many comments about your focus on locally owned business, which people love, um, and the pride, friendliness, and sense of community that Dunedin engenders. So those are some of the themes that we heard in that question. So um, kind of, I know we briefly have talked about this in the in the beginning. Jennifer had mentioned, but really the purpose of you know presenting this data is to really give you the opportunity to digest it. You go over it, um, you know, pick it apart. I think what is it, 193 pages of open-ended comments, and we that, cut the open ends down. <laughs> and we did. We uh, when, when I yeah when I came on board. Um, I, 
for, for me, a data, you know, to, to be able to quantify data um, by percentages and things like that is very helpful. We know the residents, they really like the, some of the open ends. So where we could um, transition open-ended questions to like a multiple choice or, or present it in, in that way, we did make a few of those changes. But again, moving forward, um, I know it's a lot to go over. There's a lot of information in here, which is great because that gives us, you know, opportunities to, um, you know, communicate, uh, to, you know, create an action plan and then as Jennifer had mentioned also um, knowing that our budget is aligning with what we're seeing out of this survey. There is some really good meat in those 190 pages. We, <laughs> we, we went through every single comment. So. so with that, are there any questions? Okay, let's start. I'll start on this end for the first round. Okay. Um, yes. I, wait a minute, I would have find all my things. Um, I, I, I told Jennifer the same thing. There were two things that sort of, uh, you know, stuck in my mind that, I mean, for one thing on the Pinellas Trail, although we don't control it, uh, I think an easy fix is we can have them redo those signs walking Bicyclist. I mean, they are very worn. I mean, that's a. Can I just tell you what's going on with that? Are we getting there? Well, there's a differing of opinion going on right now. So we have <coughs> those markings, right? Uh -huh. And it's the feeling of the <coughs> traffic engineers at Forward Pinellas that they should go to the national standard of slower be right and faster be left which I guess is a known national standard, although everybody we know knows the markings. Mm -hmm. And so just at the last meeting, I think it was last week, uh, I had the conversation that I and others agreed there's not a mechanism to make this happen yet, but the discussion was, look, Dunedin is the busiest place on the trail in the county. All the, all the people say that all the counts and, and apparently we don't have a speeding problem. That's what we were hearing. They did a speed study. The problem is, is when the walkers are going three to five miles an hour and the bicyclists are going 15 miles an hour. And micro mobility right. is going 20. That, that feels so much faster. Mm -hmm. So what I've asked for is consideration to in these spots along the trail, I wasn't trying to ask specifically for Dunedin, but definitely for Dunedin, can we widen the trail in places and can we separate? Like, like literally, not just a not just a line. Like but a bollards or something. To keep something. In just those high, busy areas. But your so, residents would be happy even with just repainting. Right. Um, and so But but you're I heard it over and over yeah, and so over I, again. I have brought it forward. I haven't gotten confirmation, but it, just so you know. No, I mean, I, that's one of our top five. Whether it will ever happen. I don't Some of the things that, that, again, that I was sort of interested in was I don't think we've had things about water quality for 20, 30, I mean, years. Mm -hmm. And yet we were getting uh, on that, uh, and I read them all, made my head spin, <laughs> but, um, you know, on water quality. And yeah. uh, again, though, you know, we did have an unfortunate accident, uh, you know, at our water plant mm -hmm. that, you know, I mean, things will happen. And maybe, you know, that's another thing of communication uh, but but I, I was surprised at that. I was. Our, uh, could I just ask? When did our water it, issue happen? The September. 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 Of last yeah. year. So we were like, right, it was so actually we were fully back to the uh, like December, osmosis right? function in December, and yeah, then this was February. People March. were like, you know, probably bad timing. They're still remembering it. First time yeah. That, you know. The and, film. And, and, and again, that. I I said it could be just the proximity of the, but I was surprised at that. I was surprised at. The, the police, and I, again, you're going to say, well, they got 80%, but the really very satisfied was 32%. And it seems like that some of that, that 
I say angst, you say angst, whatever it is, blah, 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 but was with our community policing, and I talked with Jennifer about that, um, you know, several years ago, I remember our CPOs being at, I mean, you'd go to a chamber event, you'd go to a downtown merchants event, you'd go to any place, and they were there. You remember that? Yeah. And you know, and some I do see what's his name? I see him all the time. Yeah, Terrence Valley. Yeah, sure. yeah Mr. Valley. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, Terrence is. There. I see Terrence. And, and I do see and, Terrence. And the blonde, uh, Chrissy Campion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Her. yeah I mean, but I mean, all the time. I don't know though. But I, I do. You see him all the time walking around downtown. No, that I don't see. See, I mean, I you, remember Janice I Wagner. Yeah. She yeah. was yeah. downtown. You would see her up and down. So I don't know. It could be, you know. There is a difference. I we've been saying right. that no, since I, the last survey. We actually, if you remember from the last survey, we got two more. Yes. Yeah. Draft. And there. No. Well. Right. Community policing officers. So I like Terrence yes. very much, and I know Christy just came on. Is it Christy? Mm -hmm. She just came on, but um, I'm just saying that that. You know, and I brought this up with Jennifer, and it it may be totally, uh, off guard, but. You know, a long t time ago, and I, I, we did have the the neighborhood uh, na neighborhood watch yeah. program. It was really strong. You had one person per per, uh, per neighborhood, and we had an excellent guy that did that. And he knew every neighborhood. He knew the neighbors. People really felt like they had a really almost instantaneous way to report things, to get questions on. And they, I, I don't think they have that position anymore. Mm, they don't. But I saw a lot of uh, really, you know, good feelings that, you know, not only were they being protected, but they were being a part of it. They were a part of protecting their neighborhoods. Um, so, you know, I, I know Teresa is the, um, she, she is the liaison. liaison. Mm -hmm. And maybe she could discuss that. I don't know. Well, as, as we'll, we'll gather all of your comments together and, and we, when we develop the action plan, you know, we'll roll that in and, and we're going to bring that back to you and, you know, at some point and let you know how it is we're going to address some of these concerns. Mm -hmm. Okay. But, and, I mean, I just wanted to bring that up when we talked. And I, I think, not to interrupt you, but I, do, I think the last time we talked, and it's been quite a while yeah. since we discussed it with the sheriff. I mean, when I say quite a while, probably five, six, seven, eight years. I don't know. It went away during the um, recession. Right. But also, when we remember when we tried to, and Jeff, I think you'll remember this when we were trying to get the a new one done um, in the South Side with Stacy Rush yeah. and that group, right? right? Mm -hmm. And the sheriff sent, I don't know, I don't remember who, but there was a couple of community meetings, and it inevitably did not do well because there weren't enough people that wanted to be involved. Now, that was just that one area, I'm just saying. And the sheriff just said people don't do the same things they did 20 years ago. And maybe that's true, and maybe this, that's what they, maybe this yeah. is antiquated, but also if you don't continually carry on a program, how do you know right. that they will not be more interested? Mm -hmm. I mean, if you give it two shots, you know, and you have two questions, two community things and everybody talks and then you get up and leave and well okay well it's done you know maybe a continuity of effort may be called for right and if it's an antiquated idea then you know okay may i may i just for sure. people that are listening particularly a neighborhood watch chair mm -hmm. we just had our big meeting uh three weeks ago uh, there is a person in charge of this. He was the person down when they did the awards uh, about three, uh, about four or five weeks ago. Um, so it kind of depends on on who is what area it is. We have we have full block captains, the whole nine yards. We have a, you know, so um, we're in effect. Um, not that everybody is, but thank you very much for bringing that up because it's a, it's a very sound program, 
and really, really were the eyes and ears for the sheriff. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, it's the dial the 6200 number if there's any questions or if you're panicked, you dial 911. Mm -hmm. And fundamentally, that's what it is. And it's, it's you know, safety and security for our neighborhood. So great point, and, and, we, and that's communication. We can get that out again and you know, encourage people to, to form the groups. And we've got some strong groups here in Dunedin. I know two, I, well, I know two that are strong. But what I'm about not the others? Seeing that in the South Side. Correct. So, so I think it's great to bring it up. Great. You know, communication-wise, yep. And Mo, I know you're going to. Well, that. yeah. I mean, I also, I guess, like communication that Ann said. I want. I don't want to take away from the fact that the um, the uh, very satisfied satisfied is almost 90 percent in all areas of police. 93.5 in response time. Um, you know, I was looking at those numbers and looking at it compared to fire, and it's interesting. I first of all, I thought to myself, well. It's, a, it's less because police are enforcing, correct. fire are helping. No, correct. Um, and that. the other thing is interesting, I asked Jennifer yesterday, I said, how much does we spend on our, our police to contract, our sheriff's contract now? 4.2 million. How much is our fire contract now? Our, our police service, about 8 million. And I guess if you went back 25 years, what we're spending, we'd probably be at about 8 million for, sher for sheriff. So we have to ask ourselves, too, has it been easier to cut there? Has it been easier to get you know, as much as we want to get, and if we want more, um, do we need to just rethink how we how we structured things originally with the contract and how we structure it now? That maybe we've it's been too easy as a contract to to nip it away a little bit, mm -hmm. and and it's not and with when we own the department, it is what it is, right? right, right. So um, so I, I think the comments are great. I think, um, but but I think it's a deeper dive, right? Well, oh yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm, hey, this is. I'm not a statistician, but I mean, these are just. But neighborhood I, watch. I mean, I remember back the last time we did a big push for it, and oh my God, at the end of it, like I had people ready to shoot themselves trying to get something going in their neighborhood. But that being said, I mean, I think Commissioner Torn is a great example of where it works, and it definitely can work. I mean, mm -hmm. well, know. we had that great guy. You remember? He knew everybody. He did. He I was remember it out. Well. He was. He knew people. And, and maybe it's that, you know. Well, we had an annual thank you. Uh, yes, we had an annual thank you dinner for the Neighborhood did, Watch yeah. people. And uh, so anyway. I forget uh, who it was, but it, they, he it was a lady. Right. We have Deputy Skipper yeah, now. Everybody knows right. Deputy Skipper. So he, work, he works the mm -hmm. whole thing. But they'll assign somebody. If I, if I want somebody with a, with a dog for a program, they'll, mm -hmm. it'll be there. But, but it's not working equally well across, we, yeah, and great, so great maybe idea. we need to figure. Okay, so then um, Be, some before we leave that topic, I want to. Uh, you mentioned the community police officer program, and we'd said this in 2019, <coughs> and it remain. In fact, it's even more true. Of the 17 uh, of the 1,715 people who responded to the survey. Only 665 could rate the community police officer program. That's only 38%. Everybody else didn't know. So for your residents, it's not a big visible um, effort. And is that an issue? That's what I'm saying. At one point, I felt with the CPO and our neighborhood watch, they were very, very, very visible. And you know, it's sort of like know the face of who who is there to protect and serve. I, I think that's important. So from the comments, my sense is more that the frustrations are with the sheriff's department. To to the extent that resident, residents can distinguish and and are communicating um, who it is that they were having an issue with mm -hmm. from from the comments side. Mm -hmm. Was it more traffic centered, or was this holistic? No, there, there were comments about rudeness that okay. did not seem to necessarily, I, th there were definitely traffic and speed trap yeah. Yeah. comments, but, but also um, just rudeness in dealing with people in non-emergency situations. I, there, there were several comments along that line as well. Um, I, I know that I've got to hit it because I know we've got a lot. Yeah, we have 15 minutes left. <laughs> <coughs> well, after my next six pages, <laughs> I read all those 195 million comments. Well, maybe anything that you want city staff to take a look at okay. about that part. Okay, then um, 
on affordable housing. You know, I've really, really been thinking about this, Jeff, and, and somehow we really have to make that springboard of realizing we're trying to, and, and they, it, it's all important, every level, whether it's really people unafford, <clears throat> where how a roof over their head is not available. I get it. I mean, it's from here to people that are saying, well, I'm making blah, 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 but I still can't as a teacher, as a fireman, as a policeman, as a, you know, as one of our servers, whatever, I can't rent our own in this town. That's workforce. I mean, so I think that that's something we're going to have to really struggle with and how we implement some sort of program that eventually, and I think that would have to be with a, a lot of help from different levels that a certain percentage maybe of development would meet some of those expectations. Mm -hmm. That's, so I thought that was very important to me. Um, downtown parking continues to come up. I was really happy to see that there was a lot of interest in maintaining the charm and the history and the culture and also that there were a lot of comments on uh, overbuilding on small lot sizes. And that's something we just really tried hard to take a good stand on. And there were a lot of comments in there. Okay, I'll shut up. Happy. <laughs> Never happy. I huh. would stay here another hour to listen to everybody. <laughs> I actually would because this is very important and I'm not saying that facetiously, but um, Jeff, anything, I know you probably have a lot of comments, but how about anything you want anybody to focus on? Um, well, just the, 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 main, the main topic, so I'll just tag on sure. to what the uh, commissioner said, mm -hmm. affordable housing and the idea of uh, it's not one tool, it should be every tool should, should be out. Um, and even things that aren't in our control, but like wages, right, that needs to be a conversation. Um, certainly understanding that part of affordable housing issue is uh, what the rest of their income is spent on, which is transportation. And, and when it comes to car payments, when it comes to insurance, when it comes to gas prices, when it comes to maintenance on cars, we got to think equitable transportation. And we need to talk about bicycles, and we, talk, we need to talk about golf carts and just equitable forms of transportation. And we talk about the trail. One of the things we need to talk about, and I mention it, is why are bicycles on the trail? They're on the trail because they do not feel safe on the roads. And so part of the fix for the trail is also allowing bikes not to be on Wick the trail. Wick said the same thing. When we had this conversation way. last week. He said the exact same right. thing. He right. said you will ultimately remove some of them from the trail right. if they can be on roads. But that is a long-term, very expensive fix that is going to happen over decades. It but, doesn't help right now. But if we don't talk about it, it's always long-term. Right. No, you're right. So we have to talk about it. We have to make plans for it. Absolutely. Um, Can I add one, pop one little thing in? Sure. ADUs, and that was in my thing. But, you know, we, we need to go back and really look at our ADUs and, and create the availability to create. We need ADUs. We need multifamily. We need bicycles. We need multi-use, um, especially on, on public transit. We need to talk about public transit a lot more. Um, uh, we need to get our traffic planner so we can accomplish these things that have been on a list for a couple of years. And you know, I'm starting Just to saying. agree with you. And I also, I also know that, I mean, our team has right. killed themselves trying to do it. Right. it it's, a, it's a shortage, right. you know, everywhere right. and, and, and of also these part positions. Of the problem, I mean, we, we made great, great strides with the golf carts. We actually we had a okay. golf cart yeah. right, community that was a wonderful partnership mm -hmm. with the city. And, and we don't have that with bicycles. Bicyclists go, yeah, yeah, I'm just getting on my bicycle. And I'm trying to form that group, not to be adversarial, but just to yeah. really partner with and see, and we'll see where that goes. Um, that's it for now. Gotcha. Yeah, you know, everything. Just a small list. Just a small just a list. Small. Am I next? You wow, are. okay, this is You're like. You're closest uh, to me, so I'm going right to you. Uh, we didn't ask about the golf course in there, did we? Like in terms of an item. 
I thought, I don't know if we talked about it before. It would have no, been nice. We asked but, about Sterling driving range, yeah, and we didn't have, ask about the golf I'm course sure why because we it was still Is too early. Lots of people talked about it. Oh, though. yeah. I it, know. Oh, I mean, yeah. I get that, but it would have been nice to see how it ranked on It's one of the stuff. top. Mm -hmm. It's one of the top mentioned items that I can mm -hmm. see. Not the, yeah, not the same as rating it. Um, okay, but either way, that was we all knew it. We somehow we uh, it would have been good to have it in there. Um, you know, I, first of all, I mean, not losing sight. It's, it's it's a very good survey. I mean, you know, what is it? What's the percentage of people very satisfied with Dunedin and, and looking, looking, services, looking? Ninety three point six. Yeah, I mean, so it's really good. I mean, and we know it inherently that people love Dunedin, but. And, and sitting up here, we know inherently the same fears. We have the same fears. I could, I could, you know, some of this, and sometimes it's articulated differently, sometimes with anger, sometimes with love, sometimes with, mm -hmm. you know, there's a lot of ways it's said, but, you know, we all, we, we, we sit up here and we worry about traffic and we worry about overdevelopment. We just did a huge thing with the overlay to try to help the McMansions. I mean, we know it, we live it, we all love to need and, you know, um, so I, I don't know there's any surprises in here. Um, it's always a little sobering <laughs> when you're sitting up here because you do love the city and you're trying hard. Um, so, but I, I think, again, it, 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 it gives us our roadmap. Um, you know, traffic, development, affordable housing, um, lots of little things in there for staff to pick from that are, you know, things that aren't to our level, but like just little snippets of, yeah, you could, there's some low-hanging fruit that people mentioned. They probably could be taken care of immediately. Um, you know, it is interesting because I, I'm sorry, Commissioner Gow's not in here for me to say this, but I mean, the whole bike bike path thing. Because I mean, I was just walking over and over and over, I, and it was mentioned right. And and I was just walking on Edgewater Park Linear, the John Harvard Linear Park, and I mean, oh my gosh, the bike pedestrian. It's just constant. You're okay. constantly trying to move out of each other's way. Because there's no bike lane there. It's not wide enough. It's it's constant. It almost makes you feel like, you know, and then, you know, you're walking with people and they're like, why are the bikes on here? Well, because they don't want to be on the road. Well, there's a place on the road. Well, they don't feel safe. You know, well, it's this big. Yeah. Who could do that? Right. It's, it's actually in the middle of the road. It's yeah. not, there's not I even mean, a bike lane there. No, I mean, it's a real issue. And, you know, we all know, too, when you start getting into neighborhoods and trying to do bike paths, that's its own issue. Um, so there's a lot of issues with that, but I do think I, I completely agree with Commissioner Gao. Like we have to, we have to look at our master plan and take it on a little bit. You know, I mean, you just got to be because it's just going to sit there forever. Which sometimes I think, in the whole United States of America, we sit here and we sit on logical transportation solutions, and you know, 100 years from now they have the same issues. Uh, we'll never resolve them. So I totally agree, Jeff, as you come back about the we got to take on the bike stuff a little bit. Um, I do want to say I love the idea of an Edgewater Park dog spray ground. I'm just kidding. I just thought that was an interesting comment. You did see some kind of interesting stuff in here. It would be kind of cool, but um, let's see what else. There were some very cool, unique, creative ideas. No, I'm sure that yeah. that one back there was going nuts yeah. reading some of the things they want to do. <laughs> I mean, nuts in a good way, yeah. like, yeah, give me the money for that. I'll do that. <laughs> I do think it's interesting that public transportation went up. <laughs> yeah, and it, but it was and talked I, about over and over and over yeah. again in here. Like, it wasn't top. It wasn't the top item or anything like that. But it was mentioned a lot more than I expected. You know, it just. Uh, well, you, you do go back to the whole golf cart, bikes, right. walking cars. Yeah. Um, um, you know, just the whole way that that we bring all those pieces together, and and I, I just think, and then you know, parking versus looper versus right. ways to get people yeah. around. And how are we going to get to the? It, it, I think it's our greatest challenge as a commission. I mean, it's our because there it's a it's a Rubik's cube, but it's a really important Rubik's cube because it it really is going to affect or strangle or cause more frustration in the future, but. So th th those are my thoughts, mm -hmm. at least at this point. It's a lot to digest. Uh, it, if I don't get another chance, awesome, awesome, awesome. Yeah, so value awesome. the experience that both of you bring to the table, but Anne, because you do a lot of other surveys, it really is super helpful. Mm -hmm. Commissioner. All right, I'll try to be very short. So I'm just going to address you, Anne, um, as it relates to the study. The thing I like about the study the very, very most 
is that we can use this from a communication standpoint. I think that is, that is the bread and butter of the study. So we see what, what people have of, of issues, especially when they're not correct or they need to be redirected or they can be directed. Uh, there can be a solution or there already is a solution or there's a misunderstanding. And that's what I like best about all of this. In fact, I was going to yell a few minutes ago and stay on your horse when you were talking about that very subject and, and we were talking about some other things here. So that's what I really liked about the study. One of the things that impressed me as I was going through all of it is how many of, of things how many of the things that, that residents are asking for you're already working on? So I think if you yeah. can tell them that, that will really, really help them know that you are listening, you know, and not just listening, but actually making steps to do something about it. So I think if you can just tell them what you have in the works, you know, that, that many times that, that will help hugely. That was my perception having read through everything. Thank you. So, so to me, it, that is without regards to the composition or, or the respondents or whatever have you, I think, I think that's the commonality that you would get out of this, uh, regardless of, of, of how many times they've been in there or, or what have you. They're, they're asking this somewhat the same questions as far as what I could tell uh, that I hear out there. And so that's, that's um, definitely in constant uh, and, and it's congruent to what I, what I hear and feel uh, that is happening. I think that's great, and I think if we address a lot of that, we'll, we'll be addressing a lot of what, of what our uh, constituents want to hear from us. So thank you. Thank you. Obviously, thank you for everything that you've done. Appreciate it. And, and Nicole, it was one of those, I'm sure, passion projects for you. Uh, so thank you for your efforts. As far as, you know, what do we want to focus on? I mean, you all see what's here, right? But what, besides what you've already told us, okay, the thing that I, the, some of the things that really stood out to me when I just look at the general comments, not the statistic part, because you get a real sense when you read through all of that what are your top issues? And Nicole, I'm a data person too, so I do little hash marks so I know how many there were of each or, you know, similar. So some of the things that I just want to put out was, you know, more parking, get parking out of the neighborhood, and um, hang on a second because there's a correlation. Um, Statistical correlation, Mayor? Stop. <laughs> um, oh, and, and the mentions of transportation and public transportation and access to the parking. And it just, I mean, we're already working on all this. However, what I, what I would like to say to my colleagues and to Jennifer is I don't think we can wait for a traffic planner anymore. I think we need to, we're already, already working on the garage idea. I know we're doing that. But I do think we need to get on that looper. And I don't know how we do it. I, agree. I, I just think we have to have it and, and get it going. And we can't wait. Well, we Mayor, just can't wait. We're on the looper. We've met with a company already and spoken okay. to one on the phone. So I just want to know that that's in there mm -hmm. and that there's going to be funding in our budget. Because I think that's going to, while you can't that's build the paradise, you know, pay, pave over paradise, the looper will at least. So that's one piece of it. The other piece of it is, again, and we've already talked about it, I think we need to make maybe a strategy. I'm not talking about a big report, okay? But a cohesive strategy where we're all doing the same thing, where we are pressuring, pressuring everybody, PSTA, the county, um, to get better P uh, trolley service more quick trolley service and that and that uh, waterborne transportation because everybody's sort of fighting about all that. So. 
anyway, that on those pieces, if you want to respond to that, feel free. I, I got something else to tell. Sure, I'd love to just very quickly. Um, we have met with a couple of companies regarding the looper. There is one that will address all of our issues. It's a fixed route. It's an on-demand route. It's citywide. It's downtown. It will do all those things. And really, we're, right now, what we're doing is, when I met with them, my question was, what's the bottom line? Is, right. You know, there's a pilot program, then what's the bottom line? So that we can look at that in our budget, and also the procurement process for the looper. We, right. It's not a sole source. There are companies that do this, so we mm -hmm. need to go through that process as well. Um, the other thing that stuck out to me um, was uh, a, a whole ton of discussion of enforcing golf cart rules. And enforcing golf cart rules, adding more access for golf carts, but just a lot of, a lot of talk on both ends <laughs> about golf carts. But that was one of those big divisions. I right, thought. right. Mm -hmm. and, and I'm not saying any, you know, but what I was saying, what I do think, though, is it's not about just calling the sheriff and saying enforcing the rules. I think it's, as Sue has already been doing, I think it's, you know, education, I think it's um, some enforcement, but I think it might be pulling that committee back together. It also may be um, any number of things. I do think we have to keep on looking where we can have those added crossings and all of that, but I think it has to be a multi-prong approach to the golf carts. It's not just calling the sheriff. I, th I think it has to be looked at and y'all can talk about it and bring that back, that was something that stood out to me. Mayor, I think you're exactly right. Communication is what your residents are asking for. And we've done a lot of By, it. Bikes as well. That right. They feel like bikes aren't following the rules, and if you let, if, if you make the rules better known, right. that, that might help. And, and we've done a lot of that, but I will tell you that golf carter, once a few key golf carters know, they, they'll tell a lot of other golf carters. So it's, you know, that has to be looked at uh, Sterling Park was mentioned a lot, trail crossing, trail, and all that trail stuff, which I think, again, it's a lobbying effort to go and maybe make a strategy for that, and then the causeway. That was mentioned. Well, the causeway was. Besides the golf course, that was a big one, but the causeway, which we're working on, but again, I still would like, I think there are more things we, what I saw over and over that I hadn't seen before was you know, the beach is eroding, the rocks are staying, the beach is going, we've talked about that, trying to get beach renourishment. You know, I think we just need to make a list of things that we wanna see done, and then again, go start, go after the county for all those things, so. And that's part of the action plan. Yeah, and so it's, it's not necessarily that we're spending money, mm -hmm. right? It's, it's, we're making a concerted action plan that everybody sees, and everybody's doing the same thing, and mm -hmm. that kind of thing. And, mm -hmm. I'll shut up because we are at, we are over our time. Um, any closing remarks? Uh, no, Mayor. So, so last time, well, yes, Mayor. So <laughs> last time. When, <laughs> no, and then you talk. I'm that's like, right. You know, but, yes, yes. Yeah. <laughs> we put together, uh, uh, you spoke, we listened, and uh, did you know, to, as a direct, to address all the questions and comments in the survey, we're not going to do that again until we Make have actually plan. developed and, and, yeah. and can implement the plan, and I don't want to lose, and Ann had, had, had stated it, I don't want to lose the fact that we're at 93.6% right. satisfied or very satisfied. I think that's good. I think we, there are certain areas that we can get a lot better on, and that's what we'll work toward. Last time we put all these comments together and kind of sent them out to the organization and said, how are you going to address them? We're not going to do that again either because I think that we had to, you know, I think it was, I was going to have to walk the game plank on that one because they, uh, you know, the department directors were, were pretty upset. They were already very, very busy. So I think that what we need to do is just put together, you, you know, kind of the direction that, that, that all of those comments go in and then, and then develop and implement an action plan. And I think everybody sitting here is going to have a part of it and, and all of our employees are as well. Okay. Thank you, ladies. Yes, you. it was yeah. fascinating. It was very fascinating. <laughs> Thank so we'll you. hear about that during um, the budget process, or well, I need to sit down with Nicole. And okay, we need so to you'll make, you'll let us know when yeah. we're going to hear about it. Okay. Um, all right. Listen, guys, we're five minutes over. Um, so I know that uh, Commissioner Tornga, you had two commission discussion items, but we just can't get to it today. Um, 
Are you able to bring it up at the next meeting? Was it a time sensitive thing? Is it something you can email us about and we can talk about it at the next meeting or? Uh, can we talk about it Thursday night? Um, it depends on how long the meeting goes. I mean, well, how long does everybody have till today? Do you, you got to leave? I, I've got till I one. I can go a little longer. I've got till one. Yeah, but I, I do. I yeah, I've got, oh, okay, I've got a sorry. too. Okay. I mean, it's, I don't know if I need to stay for that portion. Yeah, and I don't know either. But, but, I, but I'm already past the conference, yeah. so. Um, I mean, I think we could see how long, I mean, usually we don't get in those long dialogues late at night. I don't know how long our meeting is going to be, but. There wasn't one about the Florida League of Cities conference? Yeah, that's, that's kind of short. We should do that. I mean, I think we should that talk might, about might that real quick. That was only yeah. So let's do that on Thursday then. We'll talk about that on Thursday. That, that we can do that really quick. We can do that yeah, right we can now. Do really that right quick. now, and just get that one. Okay, yeah. I'm just I mean, saying I have a conflict. That's oh, what I'm oh, telling I'm you. Sorry. I, I do. Right. Right. I mean, I'm sitting texting. Yeah. Sorry. All right. That's right. what both of us are saying. Stop. Stop. Okay. We okay. can. We'll do the All Florida right. League of City one, especially if it's quick on on Thursday, and then at the next okay. Tuesday meeting, we'll we'll bring forward the other item that you emailed about. Okay. Um, yeah. Um, okay. Why don't we just put all our stuff at the end of the next meeting? I mean, Thursday's meeting. I mean, are all like the updates. Like the liaison. Well, you've got a big well, liaison. I'm I know you've got a big update, but I mean. i got a liaison update. I'm going to keep my. All right, so we're going to do the liaison updates on Thursday? Yeah, that's fine. Good. I don't think for Thursday will be real hard. Truthfully. I'll add that to your cheat sheet so that we put it. Well, you add it to the agenda. So people know it's there. Reports. Yeah, just put uh, uh, commission comments. Enter information. Yeah. Okay. Your Commissioner Franey had asked for a schedule on the uh, pickleball at Eagle Scout Park. I will email it to you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Just held up a sign. Okay. <laughs> Mm -hmm. All right, thank you everybody. We will adjourn and cool. continue our conversations on Thursday. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you for watching this City of Dunedin government meeting. If you'd like to review any part of this meeting or watch any previous government meeting coverage, you can watch these meetings online anytime through the city's website, DunedinGov.com. Stay connected with everything Dunedin. Follow the city on this channel and on the city's Facebook page, through Twitter, and on the city's YouTube channel. Thanks again for watching this Dunedin Television production.